Because you've got I powerful was... legs. How did you get the physique? Was it gym or how did you get the physique? Um, I've always been that. She's actually not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I sure this... know it'll mind. Move him out of here, then, Darren. Oh. Ricky Hatton didn't go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual I don't want to that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Buglioni <laughs> live on <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> you your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. Boxing um, Natters Messenger Group. Oh, they're going to. Oh, I'm going to be the king. Jay Bum. You know what I'm saying? Well, hello everybody and welcome to the 568th edition of the Boxing Asylum Nuttos podcast. I'm your host Steve Wellings and joining me on the call we have Andy Patterson and Matty Di Gialonardo. Going live on YouTube from 8 o'clock every Sunday evening, the ad-free Patreon RSS feed updates shortly after the show concludes. Hello to everyone listening through the week on YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sports Social. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast player of your choice throughout the entire month of April. Nothing less than five stars is acceptable. We're going to be talking a few bits and pieces later on. Bit of Zelfa Barrett going in against Jordan Gill. Charlie Edwards was in action. There was German action as well. The big one next week, hopefully, Bappy Rob Kelly will be here to join us for Devon Haney against Ryan Garcia. Value of the week's questions and a bit more. Let's start off over in the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Nice and hot over there. Jared Anderson getting a win over Rehad Murphy, former cruiserweight champion. Looking at scores here, actually, 100 uh, to 90 times two. Can't disagree with that. Not sure where David Sutherland got the one round for the 99-91 uh, for Murphy. He didn't do an awful lot, now. WBC USA heavyweight title was on the line. So is the WBO international heavyweight title. A couple of belts there for you, Matty, of uh, varying interest. Whether he'll get a shot at a, at a proper title in the future remains to be seen. Do we blame Jared Anderson? Do we blame Rehad Murphy? I blame top rank, Matty, not for this 10-rounder. Not the fact it was a 10-rounder. We will blame them for that as well. The matchmaker for serving up these dwarfy opponents who refused to fight. We had George Arias, far too small beforehand. Andre Ridenko, far too small as well. Rehad Murphy, far too small for Anderson. Charles Martin chucked in between. Decent opponent. Not going to complain about that. What's going on here with the matchmaking, Matty? I don't know. It's kind of like uh, they just wondered what all these heavyweights would look like against a lethargic David Tua. <laughs> I, um, I am very upset at myself for watching this fight to its conclusion. Ooh. I think that judge gave Mary the 10th, which she probably threw more punches that round than any other by a long shot. It was uh, absolutely ridiculous. I, uh, you know, I was just boring. You learn nothing about nobody there. Um, lucky for Anderson because who knows how capable he would have been against a good opponent considering uh, the lack of focus he's probably had considering his legal troubles. Um, you know, uh, I uh, early, earlier today, Steve, I, I learned that uh, – that fentanyl users will drink their own urine because it still has the residue of fentanyl and they can get high again. Ooh. And I think that sounds better than watching Anderson versus Merhi again. If given the choice, I'm going fentanyl piss, Steve. 
a bit of fentanyl piss on a Sunday night. I mean, not going to be in against that. No judgment here on the asylum, if that's what you want to do. Uh, no problem at all. Harvey Price Boxing returns in the chat. He says five past eight. He's not happy about the time in here. But the Dr. FMG is in. He says, listening to the Boxing Asylum at 5 a.m. in Oz. Must be out of your mind, Bruce. Absolutely. Nothing better to do there. MB says Anderson should have fought VNLO. We'll get to that very shortly. That is a good suggestion. Uh, Andy, you were mentioning there in the little off chat, I think it's worth mentioning. Murphy, career cruiserweight, secondary belt holder. He wasn't really a world champion at all. He was a Euro-level guy. Beat Tony Yoka. Says more about Yoka, I think, than Murphy's uh, levels of ability. Tony Yoka. Tony Yoka. Yeah. Who, who has been exposed, exactly. Murphy, Andy, was right down in the depths of Punchy's throne, according to CompuBox stats. I don't mean in this bout. I mean of all time. I think he was the bottom sure two helps. or three. 144. Very tight defence. Give him his credit. Got $120,000 for the fight I read somewhere. Was it down to Anderson, Andy, to cut the ring off better and open him up? Or is this just about the win and moving on for him? Um, I think, to be honest, mate, I think there's there's an element here that is poor from him, actually. I mean, he ain't beating any top heavyweights soon, if that's what he's putting in against a guy who's just basically shelling up. And you know, I did, you know, unlike Matty about the fentanyl crisis, I did think I, I ain't into that, but I did do a wee bit of experiment on myself. And that I put this fight on at 1.5 speed, and I, I did a bit, uh, it was so it was so boring. Watch the fight at that speed, I even did a wee experiment and just checked how fast 10 seconds was at 1.5 speed on daily motion. Oh. And you know, something, Steve, it came yes. just on just over six seconds. I mean, it wasn't a complete loss then. It was a complete loss yeah. Sunday morning, you know what I'm saying, mate? So I, I, at least we figured that one out. But um, it was just dreadful because I tell you what, it was fast enough for me to miss said stats, as you mentioned, after four rounds. I had to kind of rewind it back. I think I've seen something like, say, after three or four rounds, that um, your man was only throwing something like 80 punches, or less than 100 anyway. It was less. It was far less than that. Well, I think he was going the round. Round. Landed, he only threw. Uh-huh. Absolutely shocking, mate. It was just an awful, wretched shit fight to watch. I mean, I, I don't know about Anderson myself. I mean, I think Rob mentioned it last week. I, I just don't see it. You know, ESPN are bigging him up, and it's you're, you're putting them, you're putting this guy. Well, they're putting this guy. Sorry, I mean, but a pedestal, whereas it's just no there for me to, to be honest with you. Um, just an embarrassed night or for you know, a main event. ESPN. He isn't the feature of the division. Um, Tim Bradley was talking last night something about 2025 or whatever it was, you know, wait wait for vacant belts. I, I don't even think he, even waiting that long is, is going to even matter. I just don't think he is what he's been built built to be. I just I just don't see it. He's like the ghost. Uh, was it Rob says? Was it Seth Mitchell? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, it's just you know, as I say, Murray's a decent fighter, but he's no world level. You mentioned the, you know the, the, the terms of the guys that he's fighting. Now, the wee guys, the guys a career cruiser. He has not challenged anybody really at a decent level. I mean, I think uh, Gully Marion beat. I think he was or stopped him in like tenth or eleventh mm-hmm. round. Mm-hmm. He beat Mediocre, which he did clearly. By the way, I remember watching the fight. But that's his level, European. If you're pushing Anderson for the next level of the division, then okay, you keep him, you keep him with these type of fights. Not, but you're not going to be telling me that if you're going to be having these type of fights, you're not going to be telling me that you can't open them up. You, got, you know, you got to over, you got to work, you got to work on something. You just can't be falling him over the ring and just doing nothing with him. You just done nothing with him. You're fighting a guy as well as what, what you know. What's the advantage you got over top of him? Twenty, thirty pounds, maybe slightly less. You know, you got the you got the height, you got the reach. What are you learning Men, from these fights? Exactly, you, exactly. You've got the power. You know, you're meant to be. If if you're meant to be the the, the future of the division with this type of uh, spotlight on you, you need to be doing far better than this. And obviously, well, you got the shit out of the ring as well, which is which is in the help. It's a distraction. Mm. Is he living the life? We don't know. We've heard of the, we've heard the talks before about retirement before whatever age it was that type of stuff. Now I don't pay any attention to it, but you got to wonder. Even with this stuff going outside the outside the ring and that as well, is then putting in performances over the last few fights. Nah. nah what about the little segment, Andy, where he was going around with Roy Jones on a horse? Were you a fan of that? <laughs> no, mate. Absolutely no. But it just makes him a joke, really, to be fair. You know, you can't stop a guy who's basically a punch bag, really. Yes, basically what he was. The guy is shelling up. He's not throwing back at you. So what is he? He's a punch bag. Mm-hmm. Do something with it. Fully through with the punch bag because he's not getting you anything back. 
I like so, Matthew's David to a comparison. Well, did I read somewhere as well? Is it, is it the court case? Is sometime tomorrow next... morning? I think he's oh, in well, court apparently. Yeah. So he'll not be listening to the pod tonight. He'll be in bed now. Hopefully. Nah, he'll be, he'll be in the disposition. The disposition of his lawyer. Just Iron in his suit. Yeah. <laughs> If I was him, I wouldn't be worried about 2025. 20, I'd be worried about doing 2225 from his bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is he facing here, actually, Matty? Uh, which which, which case is this one? Is this the one from fucking... Is this the, uh, of... the, is this the Michigan speeding case? Oh, I, I, think, watch, I think it was the one if you, I think he got hit in Michigan and he, he took cops on a high-speed chase and he hit like 130 or 140 miles an hour or something like that. See if you do 130, man. That's instant jail in in, in the UK. If you if you chase if you're getting chased by the cops, you're doing 130 mile an hour, mate. You're doing the clink. There's no fucking way. He, he needs to hook up with Bo Mac. There's a couple of things, Andy. So first of all, in late February, he fl- fled from police, went on a six mile high speed chase with speeds <laughs> reaching more than 130 miles an hour. Dirty, man. Rest in peace. Anderson was charged with third degree felony, fleeing police, and faces up to five years in prison if convicted. Then his second run with police was. Uh, Three months later, in November, he was arrested in Ohio for driving okay. under the influence with a gun in his car. Pleaded no. no guilt, no contest to a misdemeanor charge of improperly handling a Glock 17 pistol, fined $200, and given a 180-day suspended jail sentence. <laughs> One of those things is bad enough, but the fact there's two of them together doesn't look great, does it? Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to have to get Uncle Bob's best lawyers, I think, here involved, but... I don't know what he's facing, actually. Be fair. M- Matty, you, your, your laws out there are fucking well, man. I don't know. You, you could easily get life out there, possibly, can, can in that fucking just a system. But well, something needs nah, to change. I mean, you know, I'm it's... joking, obviously. But yeah, man. He's, he's a he'd well be all right, I think. I think he'd, 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 be right he'd be all right this time. You, know you got to look but... at the way they, they've treated some of these guys when they get in trouble uh, with this, that, and the other, you know, Gervonta Davis and otherwise. And, and and they're they're reasonably can be reasonably lenient on them. I and I, I think you know some of that might have to do with uh, you know income and the ability to get a good lawyer and things of that nature. Um, so he he might get like you know a delayed sentence. You know don't uh, don't you know mess up in the next you know two years or whatever. And you know it's basically done and over with. But you got to think. I mean he's got so much going on. I mean if a judge does that for him, uh, what are the odds that he's not going to get nailed for something? Has he finally learned his lesson at this point in time? I don't know. I don't know if he's going to jail. I don't know if he'll uh, if he's just going to get probation. But he's going to have to do a real 180 in the way that he goes about living his life if he wants to avoid such things. Um, if he if he manages to skirt by this situation. Uh, you know, talented or, or, or not, uh, capable of winning a title or not. Um, you know, just, I, I think it's time for Jared Anderson, uh, the man to get his shit together before it's too late. And, uh, he'll, he'll be retiring, uh, on the, uh, the account of the courts, not his own. You can tell mm-hmm. as well. I mean, the activity just over like, you know, obviously 2023, 20, fought three times. He hasn't fought in eight months since Rodenko. It's killing his development, and then he, he pits on a performance like that. Obviously, as you say, Mike, there's just there's too much things, just too much shit going on inside the ring, and he needs to get his stuff sorted out. But what about an opponent next, Andy? I wouldn't mind seeing Vianello. I know he lost to a Jagba, but it was close. Uh, Anderson mm-hmm. won't fight a Jagba for a number of reasons. The former gym mates, spine partners, all this bollocks that we hear. But putting that aside, a Jagba's on the cusp now you would imagine, of a world title shot, whereas Anderson isn't quite at that stage. So it's within top ranks' interests to keep the most apart from each other, I think, even though the Jagba fight would be perfect for Anderson. So what about Vianello? He would at least bring the heat. He wouldn't run around. I mean, he's, he is smaller, but he has fast hands, and I think he would come to Anderson and make a fight of it. Yeah, and I suppose as well, mate, but even though he lost last night, I mean, he stalked his gob a wee bit as well, wasn't mm, it? I because so, it, was yeah. a, it was a competitive fight. It was, yeah. it was decent of sorts in terms of heavyweight action. Um, we kind of shit on both guys last week, to be honest. Well, I, I think I think we shit on Vianello at least, and that was really interesting. But uh, to be honest, they stepped up and put on a, a decent heavyweight fight. And uh, you're right, I think Vianello, if he's going to be putting in that type of performance, I think he would probably bring out about a dog fight in, in Jared Anderson and I'd maybe ask questions to see how much he really wants it. But uh, yeah, it'd be an interesting fight that one, I think. I mean, just pulling up the rankings here. Well, apparently, whoever yeah. lost that fight was supposed to lose their their top rank contract. contract. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that now. Though I think both of them, especially v- well, obviously a Jagba's not going to lose it, but Vianello gave a good enough account of himself. They'll bring him back, I think. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that fight, you know, it could have been a draw, maybe, but uh, I and uh, a rematch, I don't think I'd be opposed to. 
Um, Guido well, against uh, Johnny Rice. Like, give him a chance to avenge that one if he really wants to stick around. I don't know. One thing I'm interested in, and I, I don't know if I'm maybe just thinking about outside the box here, but maybe your, your excellency, maybe just think about bringing in Gerard Anderson in for a heavyweight fight. He seems to like heavyweight fights, that guy. Mm-hmm. Bring him out to Saudi, maybe match him with someone. I don't know. Say, I'm just pulled up, as I say, they've got the rankings here, so maybe. F- Put him in like a Bacoli ish type right, of Bacoli opponent. Bacoli or oh. Joel Miller, I thought they might stick him in with actually. Well, Joel Miller, he's another one facing Joel Sentence, isn't he? What he did was even worse, man. He's going in there with women trying to steal his car back and shit like that, was you know? Yeah, exactly. Hold my beer, says uh, Joel Miller to Anderson. This, not this baby shit doing a 180, Matty said earlier, at the wheel of a car. Andrew Thicket says, I threw more punches while making a cup of tea between rounds. Mrs. Thicket walking into doors again. Um, oh, Ryan Deal's throwing in a... That domestic suit. violence. Yeah. Was that? <laughs> he said, have you boys already discussed the boxing news coming out of Ireland that Adam Cognacci is looking to relaunch his career with Packy Collins in the corner? What? <laughs> Fucking nice. He's a that's, brutal that's bastard, a wind man. Up. That's going to be a flipping body on the record, that is, aren't they? It's <laughs> a wind-up, surely, it is, man. It is, it is, man. It's got to be. <laughs> Fucking way, Quinlack. He's, you know, fuck's sake, man. Pascal Collins gets some stick, man, but I like him. I've known him for years. He's if, a nice, he's a nice guy. Like if if Kodak is actually like relocated, it's purely just to hold pads or something nah, like that, mate, or carry the water bottle. Nah, or something he's like what that. he's on the wind up in a Ryan Deal, man. Flip me, he wants a body on the record. Shout out to James Ledbeater, formerly known as James Ledbetter by me. He says, "Fuck, am I doing here? I've known from James in ages. Thought you were gone, James. Good to have you back." Right. Anyway, onto the uh, fight on the undercard, Matty. As you mentioned earlier, or you might not have mentioned, but I'm sure you'd agree with this sentiment, a really fun heavyweight scrap, two guys with losses on their records, which is okay, uh, going in against each other. Both had a lot riding on this fight. You mentioned the contractual situations being at stake. You could get an, there, was, there was an air of desire and an air of desperation, I felt. Sometimes you have to create that kind of desire and desperation to create a good fight, and that's what it did. These guys were, were fighting for their futures, literally, and that's what we like to see. It's like bum fights in a ring. Yeah. It was uh, it was a pretty uh, close fight. Uh, at the end of the day, I uh, Guido definitely won the early rounds. He seemed to to hurt Ajagba a couple of times early with right hands, uh, and then uh, Ajagba after that kind of woke up and he, he was able to steady himself. and 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 what what Ajagba did is he just kind of kept coming forward because where he was getting in trouble was uh, when uh, Vianello was able to just kind of fall him back when Ajagba stepped out. And he was just able to catch him with the right hand because the jog was just moving out slowly in straight lines. Uh, but then, uh, you know, he, he, he just started coming forward, putting the pressure on, throwing more punches, and uh, and he did really well. But then, like these other idiots in recent memory, like, like why are you doing this? Uh, he decides to turn southpaw, and he puts the fight in jeopardy in the last couple of rounds by making it closer than it had to be. Uh, like he, he got too comfortable and they're thinking he was going to get Vianello out of there because he looked like he was puffing. But uh, Guido came back pretty well. Uh, you, you have to say, I mean, at the end of the day, I have to say a jog was the better fighter. He, he's, he's got better technique. He has uh, a wider variety of shots. He's got better balance. Uh, Vianello falls in a whole lot. But, you know, I, I think there's places for heavyweights like that. And, uh, you know, I don't know if top rank keeps them or not, but I, I, I think it's fine to, if guys just want to make a living fighting and we're entertained by it. Uh, if those are the kind of efforts that these guys want to put in, uh, please bring them back again, because that was, uh, that that's good fare for the crowd, especially when compared to the other one. I mean, you got a guy uh, who's, you know, knocking on the door of a title shot and, and the fight he was in was far less entertaining than, than, than what we saw between these guys who I, I don't think, uh, will, will ever, uh, ever ha- have a chance to title. I don't think they're that level, but, uh, all well and good, just good, entertaining, fun back and forth. Could have gone either ways. Uh, Ajag was just uh, nicked it by, uh, 96, 94. I had that score as well. Uh, there was one card for Vianello the other way. Um, could have easily been a draw, but, uh, do it again. Or, uh, you know, put, uh, like I said, put, um, uh, Vianello in with rice and see if he can avenge that or, or whatever. But, uh, it's, uh, I, I think Bob should keep both of these guys around. It's, well, you know, why the hell not? There's enough heavyweights he has for them to fight. You know, why can't Vianello fight, uh, Torres or. Yeah. I was just going to say good, good shout. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah, He was falling in a bit onto the uppercut, but that was what made it exciting. Andrew, I think it says I had v- Vianello winning 96, 94, maybe a draw. Don't they will rematch because FA was there to get the win and move on. Yeah. I don't think they'll have a draw. I think they got what they wanted. Although I did come Kind of feel like Vianello might have won. Uh, Thicket also says FA showed decent head movement, sometimes after being continually hit in the head, but did see improvements. 
Um, he, he's a bit like a stunt double Wilder, isn't he? <laughs> like, like Deontay Wilder's stunt double FA, maybe not as uh, flexible, which I can't believe I'm saying either, but he does have a bit of a Wilder feel about him. Yeah, yeah, a little bit uh, on that one. Just, uh, you know, and a lot of that was, you know, kind of he just used to be, and he had that uppercut was nice because he tends to be kind of a, a straight ahead one, uh, one, two kind of puncher, but uh, he, um, yeah, he is kind of a mini wilder in his, in his own way, but uh, there was a, a little bit more to, uh, to like from what he showed there. And, and dare I say, if he didn't have those little changes that happened there, I, I think uh, Vianello probably would have beat him convincingly. Uh, Andrew, I think it says again, did anyone honestly watch this live over UFC 300? No, not at all. I didn't watch it live or watch UFC 300. So there you are. I uh, Andy, that was entertaining. And, you know, I, I'm not a UFC guy, but good luck to those who are. Uh, early on, I thought the hand speed was the difference. Vianello, he was able to throw these short, sharp shots, reach the target a lot quicker than a Jagba, which gave him trouble. Definitely hurt him in that second round if the oh. round had been a bit longer. Then, I don't know, I thought there might have been a case off the top of my head for the second round to maybe even be a 10-8, Andy. I know there was no knockdown scored, but if you hit someone that hard that he walks not only to the wrong corner <laughs> once, but twice, then surely there's a case for... <laughs> Possibly yeah, a tonight, round. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. But I think if <clears throat> if that had actually had a wee bit more, uh, say another twenty to thirty seconds, that could have got really interesting. I yeah. don't know if he came maybe a force something different. Or definitely maybe would maybe got a, a a knockdown or two. Interesting, but um, close competitive fight. Um, I thought both guys were sloppy at times. A wee bit lacking a wee bit this skillfy here and there. Um, wouldn't have been disappointed by a draw. I would not have been crying about a, a, a close win either side. Um, in all honesty, um, I did think, I think, yeah, Vianello was showing me but moments of kind of nervousness and that, but he did well. He's stepping in there. I think a Jaguar in that as well. As he's, it's just not going to happen for him as well. I don't think. Um, at this point, I, I class him as a top, top twenty-five heavyweight at this point. Um, would they beat Anderson? Definitely no. As you're mentioning about, you know, I know you're saying it would never happen because of the gyms and that, but just theoretically, you're, you're thinking, I just, I just don't, I don't see it. Um, maybe the guy. I'm just trying. Who, who's the Turkish boy again that you fought? Was probably his best oh, one. Oh, um, oh God, what do you call that fella? I know Ali, he, Ali something. He went Ali. on to beat uh, Kamnaki, didn't they? The Merizin. The Merizin. That's yeah. the one. That's Sinan the one. Samuel Sam. No, I'm <laughs> joking. He's probably the one actually. Um, but in terms of, like, say, see, see if you look at, like, you know, just make, you know, I mentioned Anderson fight that you talk about when we like proven at heavyweight, at, at, you know, at this point, you're going to see a jag, but over Anderson at this point is more proven as well in terms of opposition that he's faced. Do you agree with that one? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. And I tell you what, the thing is, though, as well, when you're talking about Anderson fighting a Jagba, Andy, there's a style that bothers a Jagba, and I'm not necessarily sure it's Anderson's because they're quite similar in size. I know a Jagba's a bit bigger, but it seems to be the shorter, more explosive guys. I say shorter, obviously, in the context of guys of a Jagba's size. But you remember Frank Sanchez, again, caught mm -hmm. him with the same shots as Vianello, dropped him. A Jag um, Sanchez had the stamina and the experience and the wherewithal to, to complete the job over the distance. Vianello quite didn't have those attributes, but if he'd have been a Sanchez type, then he might have got the job done last night as well. The scores are very close, whereas Anderson's a little bit bigger. It's the shorter, sharper guys that give him trouble, I think. Yeah, and also I think maybe activity as well could be a problem for a, a Jaguar, actually, as well, I think. So, um, yeah, as I say, we're in the entertaining scrap, at least, and that there's a decent enough fight compared to what we've got in the main event, at least, and that. I did, I did the wrong thing, actually. I watched the main event first and watched this one second, I should have, which is probably maybe... In hindsight, it's probably the best thing to do, actually, because you imagine watching this fight and then going on to that one next. Holy <laughs> shit, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's what uh, I mean. But yeah, I mean, look, fair play to both guys. I, th I did think Vianello showed decent, you know, good good resilience in that as well. Decent decent pop, as, as you mentioned there, as that as well. Uh, hurting. Um, he jagged me up a wee bit in that as well. As I said, I think just kind of a wee bit longer. He could have, he could have maybe got a, f a few knockdowns, possibly even one. Um, but... Again, it's just it's just, it's one of those heavyweight scraps that is just of a certain level, and it's not a high one, and that's just you know, slight slight stiffness there of both guys. There's defensive lapses and that as well. Um, so yeah, decent scrap. But we'll just leave it at that. 
Okay, we'll leave that where it is. Uh, on the undercard, Matty, feel free to pick out what you want. It wasn't I, didn't see a, I didn't see a whole ton. What was what was the other one that I saw? So, well, we had Conceição got a win. I was yeah. only half paying attention to that against Jose Guadardo. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did. Conceição uh, looked uh, looked pretty sharp at the end of the day for that fight. I um, kind of thought that he uh, might come back looking a little, little rusty or a little disinterested. Uh, following uh, not being able to uh, to to get the win against uh, that was Nav- was that Navaretti got the draw against yes Navaretti yeah yeah it, you know it was in yeah, it was a very very good fight could have gone either way um, but he but he he looked sharp he was throw he was throwing him hard uh, he ended up doing some damage uh, to the body of his opponent and finished it off but I think Conce Sal still plays at one thirty um, you know if not for a uh, for you know a, a title. Um, I, I, I think he's still right there, kind of in that top 15, top 20-ish area. So there's plenty of good fights for him. And considering his amateur background and styles make fights, he could pick up a title. You, you never know. Uh, the, the clock is ticking, but Kansai Sao is a very, very talented fighter. Yep, Conce so is a talented fighter. He pushed the Loma close in one of the uh, amateur fights. I seem to remember, and he lost by a point. Can't remember it's one of the world championships or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he had like over four hundred amateur victories. Yeah, yeah, a very, very good amateur Olympic gold medalist as well, as they mentioned on the ESPN broadcast. Talking of good amateurs, Ruben Villa. I know you didn't see this one, Matty, but I rate him. I think he's a really good fighter, very talented southpaw. Not the most exciting. Gave Navarrete a right good fight when he wasn't busy getting knocked down. He was completely outboxing him. I think he. I could be getting mixed up with somebody else. I think he had a couple of wins over Keyshawn Davis as an amateur as well. He's, he's talented via a top rank have signed him up, taken a chance on him. I think he's second rated now in one of the sanctioning bodies. So he should get an opportunity at some point as well. Uh, Charlie Suarez, undefeated. I think he's Filipino. Went in against Lewis Correa. Jalan Walker, top rank signed him, gave him the big build up. And he got knocked out by Alejandro Guerrero. Plenty of heart Walker, but he, his defence wasn't there at all. He, he was really getting battered, hit with hard headshots. Uh, Abdullah Mason, Ryan Deal, who put the super chat in earlier, was teasing that the Wellington curse could hit Mason. He looks a million dollars at the moment. Really, really good uh, fighter. Young too. I mean, young, for, very, yeah. nineteen, twenty, maybe hits very hard. Ron, Ron Al Ron, um, big Ron. There, he's not. He's not the best opponent in the world, but he's been pretty decent and durable in the past. And Mason just punches too hard for him, really. Uh, Rincon Alvarez, Alvarez was, was game. I've seen Rincon before. Not that impressed with him. Don't remember seeing Delgado Tamez. I'm sure I must have done. And Ali Feliz against Anthony Woodson the third. We'll come to him in Bellevue of the week. He turned up wearing his pajamas. But this Ali Feliz uh, looks quite interesting. He's that was his debut. He's 20 years of age. Big puncher. His dad is Fennelli Feliz. He was in the corner with him actually. And nerdy Wellington moment. I actually remember Fennelli Feliz fighting a guy called Gilbert Martinez. And I've looked it up here way back in 2002. Eurosport was the version I was watching it on. Uh, Feliz was he was talented. Hopefully his son isn't cursed by this. He was uh, the same talent, but he was very lethargic and lackadaisical. Finelli would have let fights drift along. He was only ever stopped once by John Ruiz, with no shame to that. Anyway, he fought Gil Martinez up at heavyweight. Martinez was a bit of a spoiler. He started off as a 154 fighter and ballooned <laughs> up by a hundred pounds over his career. And he was a little fat heavyweight at the end, beating the lethargic aforementioned Finelli Feliz. So shout out to Gil Martinez. Shout out to Finelli Feliz and right back circling round to his son, Ali, who made his debut, which was the original point uh, last night as well. Did you see anything on the undercard, Andy? Any of these characters that I'm mentioning? Yeah, I didn't see any of that, mate. Sorry. No, problem. no that's fine. That is fine. That is fine. What else have we got? Let's have a look here quickly. Uh, before we go on to the Barrett and Gill and give shout out to people from the chat, you were mentioning, Andy, something uh, over in Germany. We had a bit of interest. Thomas Picarelio. We're not sure if he's any relation to Michel Picarelio, but he's 13, 1 and 4 now after his fight with Alexander Pavlov. And Granite Schaller got knocked out brutally by Alexander Jacoji, the hunter, who has been mentioned on this podcast before. And Vincenzo Gualtieri was on yeah. the card as well. Remember him losing his title to uh, Gianni Beck, Aliam Hanalulu recently. So a bit of German action over there for you. Yeah, uh, something kind of... Check out, suppose, uh, Picarello is, I'm sure he's ranked quite high, running about uh, middleweight. I think I mentioned him last week uh, as well. Anyway, he got iced in one round against Alexander Pavlov. Um, just got caught with an uppercut, never really recovered from it. 
Um, there's Granite Shala as well, actually. A lot of a few Germans, as I say, today, that I know were saying, like, this this guy is not going to not going to do nothing. He's going to get ice if he goes past four rounds. It'll be be impressive. I said, well, it's a European title fight, you know, vacant heavyweight title. And say, nah, he's he's he's, he's just not got it. And sure enough, the guy's got blasted out in two rounds. Just did not belong there. I mean that that um, Zaku, um, how do you pronounce it? Zakuzov uh, or Zakuzi yeah. um, had something like but six nine. Massive reach, straight shots. The guy could do nothing with him and just basically, I think he'd done him in two rounds. I think it was the hunter man, he looks like a beast. Him, doesn't he? He is a monster, right? As I say, again, it'd be a welcome addition to the, to the division, I suppose, yeah. and that as well. But he's someone um, else who can not get a title shot with all the others. There's that as well, but we need somebody to kind of fill up the slack, mate. Because <laughs> Anderson's no filling their boots for us, is he? And uh, Jagbar's not going to do much either, but looks yeah. at it. Um. Yeah, but as I say, this guy will be a problem at, at European level for anybody, to be fair. As I say, he's tall, straight shots, good power. And uh, guilty area in that. Look, I, I kind of briefly had my own this fight. As I said, I was doing other things at the time. And to be fair, how he ever, I think we mentioned, how he ever won a world title, I don't know. He toiled in this fight. Um, Joshua, I think he's, what is he, he's an Italian, I think, possibly, my saying to you. Ah, Nigerian based Italian, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So this is the big the, the big Nigerian was um tall, decent job. Gold Terry just looked like an about uh, bounce in the box with the back foot. Eight rounder, keep busy, come back for uh, after getting this shit kicked out in that world title fight and that, but another one probably just kind of fritter around about the fringes of European level and that would imagine mate if he ever gets the opportunity again to get a, a, a world title fight, it will be Coming in as the opposition as as, as naturally I would think, but uh, yeah, as I say, um, the the Egon cards from uh, for Germany that they mm. seem to be the kind of top promoters just now in Germany. They've been putting decent cards over the last few months, no top stuff. You know what I'm saying? But as I say to you guys, in that as well is when you factor in what I'm watching in the UK to what I'm watching in Germany. I mean, I'm watching that shit for nothing. There's guys having to pay subscription fees. Okay, some of you got the Fire Stick, but you have to pay for the Fire Stick to fucking watch it anyway. You know, compared to what we're watching in the zone sometimes, that it's at similar levels and sometimes even slightly better. Um, so, anyways, it is what it is now. Um, which maybe just segues, uh, segues into the zone card for I suppose. I don't know as well, which was a good main event. Don't think Dave Lee was too, too hot about the other card, mind you. <laughs> but the main event can I seem to deliver. Yep, yeah, no, the main event absolutely did deliver. It was a, it was a good little fight. I just tidying up some of the boys in the chat there, talking bits and pieces. Des has joined us uh, on in the chat at least. He said, "You got me thinking about heavyweights that couldn't fail. Were predicted for world title glory and greatness, then just fell off a cliff. Uh, the future, I'll start." Dominic Gwynn, he mentioned there. Remember Dominic Gwynn from back in the day. Robert mentioned Seth Mitchell as well. There's a Joe Macy. Do you remember him? The big Italian American from New York thing ended up with a brain injury and spent about the last ten years trying to fight it to get back in the ring. As who you was, would if you have a brain injury. Uh, yeah, who was the heavyweight again? Who had the fucking implant, fucking breasts again? Mate? It looked like he had like fucking abs and shit, man. Who was it? Remember oh, him? God. It wasn't the the big Mexican guy, was he? Was it ah? Joe... Was no Mexican. He was like a set a Mexican Aye, senator or politician or something. Do you remember him? Count Joe Jorge something. Was it Count? Ca- 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 Are you talking about the dude with the fake muscles? Yeah, who was that? I can't remember. It was. It was <laughs> I know exactly. I can see him in my head. Aye. In my head, I, it's so easily. Yes. It wasn't George Kawag Kawagi, was it? The former Mexican, the member of the Mexican Chamber of Deputies. Yeah, I've got him up here. Here he is, 12 and 0 with 12 knockouts. Yeah, them plants, eh? He definitely yeah. had his abs implanted or something along the way. It was his pecs, I think, that were in. His pecs. So that yeah. been active, he's been inactive for 10 years. Thank Christ. There you are. We wish him well, anyway. What else have we Maybe got here? <laughs> Beat Pop Poop says Anderson versus Sanchez fucking would have been that interesting. That shit old, man. You want to fucking wish him well, fuck sake. Well, what else can you do? Jalon Walker was stopped by Guerrero, says Andrew. Look, uh, Walker looked very raw and boxed naively, he did. He boxed like someone looking to impress rather than look at someone looking to win. Ray says, does anyone think Ryan Garcia will actually fight Haney? He's unhinged at the best of times lately. Well, we'll talk about it later for half an hour and then he probably won't just to spite us. You know what he's like. Uh, Beat Bob Boop says, I think Garcia will beat him. Can't explain why. Just got a gut instinct. I think that's your dinner coming back up on your Beat Bob Boop. I don't think he's going to win at all. Uh, didn't Audley beat Gwyn? Yes. Oh, I think Audley did beat Gwyn actually at one point. Uh, what else have we got? 
Many in NI really fancied Scott Belshaw. I'm not sure who does. I was talking to Sam Wilton, actually, at the recent Belfast show, Big Big Scott. He moved over to Australia, and he's over married and all. He's a born-again Christian and everything. He's doing really well. Oh, ding, ding. He was a nice guy, Scott. He's very, very raw. Could definitely punch, though. Heavyweight boxing has had some full storms, absolutely. I wordly lost to Gwyn. I can't think. Maybe going back now, aren't we, Des, to be honest? Uh, anyway, what else have we got here on the agenda? Uh, Andy's mentioned it already. We might as well go get stuck in there. Jordan Gill against Zelfa Barrett. I had Barrett on points in the Prediction League. Shout out to Joe Kennedy. At the time of the stoppage, Barrett was ahead 86-85 on two cards and 88-84 on the other one. Jordan Gill was doing pretty well from what I could see. Matty, uh, Zelfa's jab was on point. I liked it. Uh, the rhythm was there. Nice distance. Every time Gill reached in and fell short with a right hand, Barrett was there to meet him with a left hook in return. I thought Barrett was boxing pretty nicely, actually, up until the finish. Yeah, he, he put on a pretty good a good performance. He he's he's a good quality boxer when he's not fighting skinnish, right? You know, when mm. when he fought uh fought Kiko, I mean he just uh looked uh, uh frightened, you know, for better half of the fight. So when he when he's confident, when he's trusting his power, um he seems to be pretty decent. And I mean to get that stoppage, uh, you know, going to the body there, um I mean, that, that was definitely a feather in his calf to be able to clean it up that way. So we'll see what's going on there. Um, I, I don't know how it'll all work out with uh, Cordina and uh, Kakachi, but I guess you could see him as an opponent for the winner of that. And uh, But it's definitely onwards and upwards for, uh, for Barrett. Uh, as far as Gil goes, I mean, uh, you know, he, he was doing obviously very, very well, but, uh, you know, what – and he, you know, wasn't the favorite going into the fight uh, – uh, but uh, I, I think given he st stopped Conlon, he might have had a little bit extra juice behind him. Um, and I think that might have been just a shade undeserved because, I mean, we've talked a bunch of times about uh, how I felt about Conlon moving up the skills and uh, scales yeah, and his ability fragile, as a puncher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it's, um, you know, that was, uh, you know, a, a good entertaining fight that was uh, pretty damn well matched at the end of the day where one guy was just bigger, just stronger. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, um, we'll see, we'll see what happens for Barrett. Um, if he fights confidently, uh, he could be trouble for uh, any number of fighters. Yep. Certainly can. Michael Thompson, who has a spanner now, congratulations. It says Barrett seems like a sharp puncher to be fair. Doesn't seem quite world level to me. Uh, the lost heavyweight to be named as well, just to briefly go off topic, Arlie and Burley mentioned Scott Gamma. Remember him from Wales, had a good fight with Mark Krentz on ITV for the British title. He fought Mickey Steeds as well. If anyone remembers Mickey Steeds in the chat, he was some size last time I saw him. Uh, and then Gamma lost to Danny Williams, I think, for the title. MB mentioned him, Matthew Ellis from Blackpool, said he was going to be one of a billion-dollar heavyweight. I think he's a bit too small for heavyweight, actually. I saw him fight Tony Bellew in the Odyssey in Belfast on one of the, I think it was Rogan Sexton undercard, Ellis. He's quite the character. He, he could fight. He was talented. But, yeah, I think he was a bit too small for heavyweight. Anyway, back to the matter in hand, uh, Andy. Uh, Gill against Barrett seemed to be a pretty even contest before the finish kind of came out the blue. Barrett, I suppose he's revived his career now. He had a bit of a contrived start to his career, I felt. You could see there was clearly some athleticism there, a bit of talent, maybe riding off the sort of Barrett name, the Black Flash and all that. It's taken a few losses and some difficult fights, but I think Barrett has actually matured into a really nice stylist, I think would be the best way I'd describe him. Yeah, it's an interesting one that actually made as well because you know I remember us talking. Remember the the is it the Ronnie Clark fight? Yeah. If he done D, you know Ronnie again, I would probably say would be a domestic level fighter, and um, he obviously had his problems outside the ring and trying in terms of kind of keep fights that type of thing and that. But um, he had his Alpha Barrett down uh, fifth or sixth round. Uh, beat him majority decision. I'm sure it was not as well as. And you're thinking, well, you know, what's the ceiling here? Has he met it? But last night he seems to have, you know, put you know, put all that experience together. I mean, he's thirty year old now. He's worked on the uh, on the local shows, you know, the local events, you know, the small hall uh, shows, um, you know, his uncle Pat shows that type of thing. And he's really learned his trade. Took a couple of losses, like you mentioned that, but that's what you got to learn for sometimes. And he's come back stronger for it. I thought last night was probably one of his best performances in his entire professional career. Right. At this level, at least, I mean, you could. I don't care what he's done in the early half of his career. In terms of levels, that is up there, probably the best he's ever done. Um, 
the uppercuts I was really impressed by, but the left hook to the body, the entire fight that he was throwing was, was lethal. And it was no surprise in the end. That, that was what that was what really put the dent in Gil, who by fair, fairness to him, brought it forward, switched stances, did everything that he could. But I just think on the night, Barrett has just put it all together. And I just think all the, you know, everything that he's done, you know, the repetition, the drills that he's done, you know, the hard yards, the hard defeats that he's come back from, you know, questioning, he's put it all together. And uh, just, you know, the variety, everything that he, he did there last night, I just, was really impressed by him, to be fair. Um, you know, fair play to Gill on that as well. As he, he got, I mean, that, that first body shot when you heard him in the 10th round. Because yeah. the thing is, when, when, when uh, before the 10th round started, both guys looked like they're, they're ready to go. You know, mm-hmm. the, the entire fight, they're ready to go the distance. Both guys looked like they had, a, they had a, 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 enough left in the tank, but once Barrett landed that first left hook to the body, um, and they, the noise it made, and they went down with you know, fair play for getting up, took another one, then he goes again, and the stoppage, to, you know, see, to be honest, uh, that's, to me, that is a clean, perfect stoppage, by because the referee can see this guy's in bad trouble here, and he ain't got nothing to try and He was wilting, wasn't he? Yep, yeah, and he had nothing really. You could see the, the, the difference in power shots and that as well, for me, was different. Barrett was landing with evil intent. Gills was losing, just losing that bit of on him, and... I just felt that it was just he was he was he was just he was going to get badly hurt or badly knocked out, and in the end, I thought it was a perfect stoppage because he was going to take another you know take another knee, and maybe the corner was going to be forced to throw in the towel, and that he didn't really want to see that happen. So the referee done the right thing, pulled him out, fair play to Barrett, and that I thought it was quality throughout the uppercuts, but especially the left hooks were were evil. Yeah, Andrew, I think it says, had Gill one round ahead before being stopped by Barrett. Good fight. It was a good fight, actually. MB says, I really enjoyed the fight. I had Gill a round up before the KO. Uh, just circling back to our heavyweights, Johnny says, Gerald Nobles. Remember Gerald Nobles from Philadelphia, the Jedi. Fought to Nikolai Valuev. That was the only loss, actually. He went the distance with Valuev. I think he got disqualified, did he? Yeah, he kept on hitting him low. He had an amazing set of tits on him. Gerald Nobles did. He was too small for a heavyweight, really. But he was decent enough. Somebody else mentioned... Who else was it? Oh, yeah, uh, Dr. FMG says Roman Greenberg, uh, Robert Waterman and Hobson and all them were very high on Greenberg. He never fought anybody. He was clearly talented, decent enough puncher, fought on those early Fight Academy, BBC, David Hay undercards. Never, ever fought anybody. First decent live opponent, Cedric Boswell, 2008, got beaten, never fought again. I wonder what he was up to, Greenberg. Anyway, um, what else? We've got someone else put something. Oh, David Price, uh, the Klitschko phone, heard it here first. Yeah, well, we heard it here last week. Uh, Beatbot Boop has thrown something else in. He said Barrett spoke about eventually getting a fight with Cordina. He's thrown himself back into the mix, Barrett, absolutely. And Jordan Gill, no shame to him. I thought he did a good job, as Matty mentioned, after he re- resurrected his career against Michael Conlon. Um, who knows if he'll fight again. Uh, as for the undercard, Matty, uh, David Lee wasn't too happy about it. It was shit, to be fair. Um, Ellie Scottney against Segaline Lefebvre. Lefebvre. Segaline Lefebvre. The fave, there you go, I was getting there. 18 and 0, no longer. Um, it wasn't a bad fight, actually. Rhiannon Dixon as well against Karen Elizabeth Carbayel. Uh, women's title, this is your, more your area, Matty, really. I, I thought that uh, Rhiannon Dixon looked uh, really strong against Carvajal. She dropped her with a really clean shot in the third round. Um, Carvajal, very experienced. She's been in with Katie Taylor, uh, one of them uh, Argentine fighters that can definitely give a young fighter a very difficult night and uh, take a, take an O here and there. So um, really, really good fight uh, from her. And uh, Scotty did a good job on taking a title from someone who's, I think Lefebvre has had that title for uh, – three, four, five years, something like that. So, I mean, good job for her uh, pulling that up. uh, And uh, that will uh, obviously open her up to some more opportunities. And uh, But those fights just kind of went as planned. Nothing uh, tremendously unexpected as far as the odds or otherwise. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they were they were they were uh, good performances in what were just OK fights. Yeah, we're just talking about the undercard, Andy. That was the women. I saw Stephen Clark come on against Jensen Irving before the main event. He looked decent, Clark, put his punches together nicely. Uh, old uh, miserable Smigger was in the corner. I didn't see Bill Crawler, uh, Anthony's younger brother. Jimmy Sainz, I know a few people are high on him. Uh, Jack Turner got another knockout. I think I did see that one, actually. That's his sixth, fifth or sixth knockout in a row. Didn't see Flynn against Maharuzi. 
Gomez Jr., I just caught the back end of this. He got cut, hadn't he, against Kane Baker? And it looked like a decent fight, and then all of a sudden it was over. I can't really speak to that, to be honest. Did you catch anything on the card, Andy? Never seen any, mate, to be fair. I think it, I got a few WhatsApp messages saying that it was uh, one of Edward's best cards of the night. Uh, sorry, best what? cards in history, and I had actually missed out a, a great deal. Oh. I realised I was getting trolled. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, one f- card that was supposed to take place during the week on the 11th of April, we were uh, pondering last week over whether uh, Steve Claggett would indeed take part against Mike O'Han. That fight was taken off the bill, as was the entire bill, actually. Moved to Thursday, the 2nd of May. Uh, Baz- Eric Bazinian has sin- sinitis or tinnitus or some- sinistus, something like that. Anyway. I think it's a bunch of bullshit because they knew Clegg was yeah. going to be fighting right. Lopez. Exactly. exactly. That's, I was just about to say the same thing, actually. So, we're so sceptical, we're so cynical, Matthew, aren't we, the two of us? But uh, yeah, I thought that too. Bastards, by <laughs> Him against Shaquille Finn has been rescheduled. Uh, Jean Robio, Findero, Shabot as well, all moving along with him. But not uh, Claggett, of course who will fight uh, Tiafimo Lopez very shortly. Someone mentioned in the chat, who was it? J.D. Chapman. Remember J.D. Yeah, Chapman? Well, and if anybody wonders why there's a handful of uh, Mexicans wandering around Canada for the next few weeks, it's because they're stuck there waiting for fights. And, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, shout out to Bazinian. He's doing his best to keep them active as he can. Uh, Matty, Pro Box, this seems like a lifetime away, these Wednesdays, they all meld into <laughs> one. Was it last Wednesday? Was it the Wednesday before? Was it next Wednesday? I can't remember. Angelo Leo for to uh, Eduardo Baez. Anyway, a decent fight. Leo's a good body puncher. Baez is tough, got in through good shots early, but he was starting to get um, worn down as the, as the fight went on. Uh, there were famous Wilson was on the undercard, so was Jacob Gomez, Dominic Valle. I watched it all, can't remember a thing about it, but Leo against uh, Baez was a decent main event, Matty, if you saw it. Yeah, that one uh, was 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 pretty solid. Both of those guys came in swinging. Leo was just the bigger puncher at the end of the day. If it would have gone 12, um, I, I don't know if Baez hangs in there. And, th- and that's a statement. Baez is a, he, he's a, he's a tough customer, good beard. Um, that, that fight, for anybody who didn't see it, well worth watching, obviously. Free right there on Pro Box's YouTube channel. Um, I um, I didn't pay a whole heap of load of attention, or I forgot what went on. I think I remember being impressed by Valle again. He's another one of those prospects that uh, has uh, a, a lot of potential for him. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, what, what the offering is, uh, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday from Pro Box, as they continue offering up some of the, the uh, most entertaining uh, cards in the sport. I certainly do. Uh, we'll talk a bit of Charlie Edwards shortly, or maybe not. We'll see who saw that one. Let's have a look through the chat first of all before we do so. Haney Garcia coming up later. Bell you the weeks. So we have a couple of questions as well, I think, from some of the boys, including Damo. Uh, Beatbot Boops in the chat. Shout out to him. And uh, Michael Thompson. We've got Johnny. We've got uh, the Dr. FMG from Australia. Can't sleep. So we're trying to help uh, put him to sleep as best as we can. Thomas Newman's there. So is Andrew Thicket. So is Ray. Uh, ben Russell, MB, Harvey Brown, uh, Dez is here as well with us. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Ryan Deal was in earlier, throws in a super chat and then disappears. He's like a good woman, does his business and then off he goes. Uh, William McAllister, uh, James Ledbetter, James Ledbetter, of course. I've uh, misnamed him there. Harvey Price Boxing Returns is with us. And so is Adrian Peterson, who says, great show, fellas. And there he is with his uh, name on the back of the American football top as well. So shout out to Adrian Peterson. Who else we got? Oh, American Jews? football torp. You mean a <laughs> fucking jersey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not here for the terminology, Matt. I'm just here for the band. You guys use the word jersey. What the fuck do you call what your football players wear over there when they're kicking shit around? I don't know. Just a shirt, isn't it? <laughs> it's a jersey. I, 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 chat help me out here is there something going on is our is our uh the wonderful writer steve wellings so i can start to lose his mind we have just a shirt concerned? i would call it we don't call them jerseys do we look here we are steve there's the boys back in really i was worried yeah. that you're steve, having a quick evaporation of vocabulary and i needed to be concerned <laughs> <laughs> changing room not locker room mate all these parlances man you need to get down with a lexicon Apparently, I just uh, my vocabulary is just too big. <laughs> Seemingly, yeah, right. What else have we got then? Uh, I don't know if any of you boys watch the Channel Five card. Uh, interestingly enough, Andy actually on the undercard, I did catch. Um, what do you call him again? So I was so interested, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> Oliver Zarin. 
He had Mikel Kessler in the corner. He, he, he knocked John Harding Jr. down in the first round. He faded a little bit as the fight went on. Obviously, he's only a 10 fight, 11 fight novice. He put his shots together lovely. And there was Kessler doing his corner for him. I don't know if you caught that one, Andy. I've never seen that one, mate. But I do know Kessler's got his enemy stable of fighters. He was... Uh, he had one of the... One of the it was a Palestinian refugee, actually. Um, Ab- Abdul Khatib, I think his name was. He... Uh, Kessler was training him for a, f- a fair bit in that as well, but he seems to have kind of like petered away. Um, I did catch the kind of like bits of the main event, mate. It was uh, it was okay actually in terms of like say Edwards, you know, in terms of coming back. I mean, how long was his last fight? It was, it was last year anyway. I know that much. It must be well over a year. But um, it was. But before that, Andy he was out for eighteen months, so it's an accumulative effect with him yeah. as well, isn't it? And before that, he was out for over a year. You know, it's not he's not been consistent since yeah. March. Isn't it? And to come back, actually, with a type of opponent who, t- to be fair, we're talking levels now, but we are talking European, and it's it's a decent level to kind of come kind of come back to. And the guy did kind of like try to win, and Edwards did. Uh, I felt you know he boxed pretty well, you know, boxed to his plan at uh, that least. And I suppose the only thing really missing was really kind of like was get getting the stoppage. But who cares? He's back in the ring. He's got ten solid rounds under his belt, and that as well against a solid operator. At that level, at least, and that as well. So we're standing in good stead. The main thing now is really is getting him back out quick. So was I don't know if he's weird, was him in with a number of fights and that. So hopefully he's out within the next two to three months, which is probably doubtful considering what he's been facing and that. What is his issues anyway? Has it been injuries and that? I think he did an interview saying he had some kind of, I don't want to misquote it here, but it was like, I think there was mental issues, depression. I think right, he maybe right. was a bit of a drinker. Uh, things like of that le- level, I think. No worries, so we'll, we'll just leave that. Everybody's got their own issues and that. So, yeah, well, listen, he's got a good one, decent level. He's come back pretty solid, I felt, at least in that as well. So, um, and this is him up, up at Bantam weight now as well. I'm trying to remember if he's been, if it's his um, debut at 118, is it? He's, oh, he's been flitting up in weights and that. So, uh, maybe he's kind of he's gonna flitting down at 118 now, maybe stick to that weight and see how he goes, to be fair, because obviously. I mean, there was high, there were, there was high hopes from actually remember because obviously he, he, after the Casimero fight and that as well, he got he got done the body shots and that. Mm-hmm. He come back solid, beat Ian Butcher, who was a decent British level champion at the yes. time. Um, Craig Derbyshire, who just uh, again solid gentleman at that. Better point, than his so. record suggests. Yeah, though. he yeah. seems like he's but, had a really interesting career. Yeah, he has. I, I think he's, he's, he's beat Rosales, for example, Christopher Rosales, who beat uh, Paddy Barnes, you know, and then obviously he, he got his chance against Martinez. We know what happened with that one. Um, but... Suleiman overruled the decision in the ring. <laughs> <Fucking> <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, what a maggot man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyways, yeah, look, as I said, He's, he's at that point now in his career as well. What is it? He? He's in his thirties now, so he's he's got to be active. Um, providing he's got his 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 personal issues in, in check, um, then there's no reason why he can't be out anytime soon. Wasman, Kala, Ness, uh, Nasser will be fucking calm. Uh, he needs to get the finger out, get him fights, and because uh, so, as I say, he's fighting that type of level opponent, getting that trinket belt, I don't see why he can't be challenged him for a world title within the next twelve months. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it was a decent level of opponent and he needs to keep active now. That's the main thing. Keep his eye on the ball. Uh, Channel 5 needs to do a better job promoting their events as Beat Bob Boop. He's not happy. Could put a bit more effort into the production for me. I think for free-to-air TV, the production's fine. But yeah, maybe... Pro- I don't know who Last minute, I've actually got the undercard on their YouTube channel just now. I've just seen it, actually. So that's, that's how we step up yeah. in the right direction in terms of their YouTube content, at least. I watched the undercard, Harvey Dykes, a bit of a fatty uh, fight with Milos Valetic, uh, Elliot Whale, knocked out Joseba Diaz, but he had his trouble early. Diaz was catching him with some good shots, especially with the left hand. Uh, Kingsley Egbenike, I picked him on points in the prediction league. He did me proud, beating Jordan Dujon in the rematch, getting revenge over him. Uh, Jersey Gate is rumbling on, by the way, Matty. I'll just call it a top, says Beat Bot Boop. The juice yep, says yep, a jumper. Who, who said that? Who called that a top? Beat Bot Boop. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll upgrade that beat, but we call it in Scotland a tap. There you go. Taps off. Uh, Taps pull off. over, says David. Put a uh, palm up. Fucking pull over, man. Paul Raffrey says a jersey. We'll agree with him because he joined you, Patreon.com. Hey, David, no, no, David Palmer's a gentrified motherfucker if he's calling it a pull over. <laughs> he's only oh, joking. A fucking cardigan. A, a reach oh, around, man. says the juice. A reach around. <laughs> a wrap around, young Michael man. Michael Thompson says an NFL smock. 
Uh, what else? Why they fucking, uh, Des says Morbius crazy. Maybe that's a regional fucking thing. Painters were smart. <laughs> the cardigan says the doctor. Told you. Yeah, Cardigans were a decent brand. Yeah. Tank tops says the juice. Uh, uh, Letterman jacket says Ray. I bet, you, I, bet, I bet these motherfuckers all wear fucking Pringle jumpers. <laughs> and, you, and you cut a bit in your fucking Jaguars talking about fucking, you know, how the young man in the road doesn't pay his fucking weight. You know. Some oh, white wankers oh. in the chat, isn't there, Oh, mate. So and he's up. getting ready to go off on a populist tirade. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking shirt! <laughs> Tory bastards. They are East Beatbox Boots from East Kilbride. Is he for East Kilbride, is he? Yeah, that's what I he said anyway. He's about 40 miles away then for me. Yeah. You wouldn't know it up to that if you weren't from there, East would Kilbride, you? I bet, I bet he came to the pubs at Scott House and got banned uh, <laughs> back in the days. I'm telling you, East Kilbride, he, 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 he got banned out of the fucking place, man. He was not allowed, didn't it? He had to go over to Spain to get a drink. Ah, he got fucking jail there, there. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fucking hang, we just sent him abroad, man. We fucking hang. We couldn't see his fucking... Brits banged up abroad. <laughs> exactly, mate. We just... He's done with English, then with, the... with Aussies, man. Send him, a fucking... send him abroad, man. We fucking bash us on the moon. Real quick, while well, I can remember, because you mentioned the group, etc., etc., I would like to extend a congratulations out to Haddam for his marriage. Congratulations to the both of you. Are I, you... Uh, we wish you the best. Congratulations, yeah, young look. man. We we hope it. everything goes great for you and you have a beautiful, wonderful family. See what else yeah. we got. Yeah. How many to go? Oh, we've got a special message for him here, Andy. Hang on, especially for Hatton. I want to tell everybody oh. yes, thank you for coming out and uh, <laughs> and honestly, happy Easter, everybody. You guys... Jesus, like Jesus was re- re- resurrected, I'll be back. But, uh, <laughs> absolutely love the fact that the crowd shows no mercy to happy you bastard. <laughs> they absolutely fucking... He forgets you know, Jesus. The, <laughs> see, see, see if a fucking rope came out of the fucking rafters, mate, for him to fucking get hung for it, man. The, the cheers of them, that crowd are being immense. <laughs> Interviewing fighters, man, have just taken a heavy sh- a headshot. It's uh, <laughs> that was the equivalent. We need more of that. <laughs> that's the just like you get knocked out of music. Hell, you music in it. <laughs> just, just like Jesus, I'm gonna get crucified. <laughs> just like uh, G- what do you call that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Alexander. 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 <laughs> oh, he's class today. Anyway, where were we? Uh, Edward, did you see Charlie Edwards against George Ori? Matty, if not, what are you doing with your life? Did I see what? Uh, Charlie Edwards against George Ori on Channel 5 on Friday evening. No, no, I didn't uh, see any good reason to pursue that. Well, in the corner of Charlie Edwards is his brother, Sonny Edwards, who has a, a nice hairline. He's a former, was it flyweight champion or superfly or something like that? Anyway, he's coming back on the Estrada Bam Rodriguez on the card, I think, on June the 29th against Adrian Curiel. This is off the top of my head, Matty. I believe Curiel was the guy who beat not Shinga, and then lost to him in the rematch recently. Good fight for Sonny, do you think? Is is Sonny doing that at 112, or is he trying the waters at 108? I think he's moving up, you know. I, yeah, I, I only saw this up. earlier. Yeah. Yep. So talk away, boys, because I'm just trying to find the information. It just come to my mind, actually. I, oh. I suspect he will, mate, because, sorry, mate, I'll just bring in, Matty, but I think he'll move up. I mean, he did not look great the last few defences, making weight at 112. He looked gone. People go over the so he's going to fight a 108 pound fighter at 115. Well, I don't know. I mean, end of the day, so, so, some of these guys are moving up, you know, frequently between the two, between those, t- you know, no, no two, three weight divisions. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I could, if Curiel is having trouble making the weight himself, maybe you could see it. I mean, there can't be that much of a size difference between them, but if uh, I would keep your eye on this because. I do believe I heard Sonny say after the BAM fight that he was thinking about trying 108. He also said, talk shit to Nonito Donaire and was talking about fighting him at 118. But uh, I, I don't know. So I'd keep an eye on that. Honestly, if if, if you th- if if it's not at 115, uh, then you might seriously think about laying something on Curiel because with your concerns about him making the weight, 112 might be questionable. But if he's trying to move down to 108, that could be a fucking death sentence, my man. There's no way Edwards will go down to 108, mate. That's never happening. Yeah. 
Skeletal man, cool. that's it, yeah. Cool. We've been giving in the Curiel, he's an he's an ex-titleist at 108. Yeah, he beat Nant Shinga, didn't he? I think didn't yeah, he upset him like sticking the knockout? Ah, yeah. That's what it was, I yeah, knocked him out. And they, 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 they lose a rematch. It was a rematch. Yeah, yeah. he lost yeah. the rematch. It was a really good rematch, actually. Uh, yeah. Back yeah. in Mexico, wasn't it? Wasn't on the Laura card recently, I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I seem to recall mm. that now, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good fight. Yeah, it was. It was an excellent fight. Uh, Des says, Oh, he can't punch and did everything in straight lines. Good opponent after a long layoff for Charlie. Down there, you need to be a ruthless puncher. Edwards will win plenty, but he has a ceiling. Yes, he certainly does. Uh, Marcus Bellinger's thrown in a good a news comment. for him is that his height, uh, you know, you got a lot of room for <laughs> <Yeah. feeling>. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, Matty. And uh, Marcus Bellinger says, uh, Hey lads, hope everything is well. He said, A fight coming up on Wednesday, which is worth a brief mention, is unbeaten Hayato Tsutsumi taking on Anselmo Moreno. Not sure how much Moreno has left, but could be a nice scalp for Tsutsumi. Now, you mentioned this earlier, Matty, and I could be bringing you in unnecessarily here. Didn't you say there was a some kind of vehicle on offer to the winner? That oh, was me. It was saying that man. That was you. Sorry, that was the IBA fight night. The IBA fight, mate. Oh, was that it right? Sorry, I thought. It was oh, no, no, no vehicle for Sutsumi Moreno. Though no, can we not get them something? Maybe a bus yeah. or some kind of. Oh, uh, mate, okay. if, I, if I recall properly, mate, did Alcimo Moreno's wife will take all his belongings in the, in the <laughs> divorce? <laughs> but she know, but she know his manager. Someone Google that shit, man. I'm Is fucking that certain. Right? I'm sick. Google that while I'm talking, mate. I'm pretty certain Alcimo Moreno's wife done done him. He was, she was his manager. She she lawyered up, and she got half his money or took everything basically. Um, and that poor, poor motherfucker was poor and penniless. Came into yeah. the world with fuck. Am I right? Roos Laguna, apparently you call her. Uh huh. Let me see. Let me find out this information. We don't this, is live, this is live information, boys. Yeah, well, but we, don't all, we don't upset her clearly, do we? By the same yeah, way. mate. She's uh, Jen Mosley. She's she's a South yeah, American. That's, Jen who Mosley, came, that's who came to my Central mind. Central American, sorry, enough. Central American. Don't see any evidence of the of the scheme here, to be honest, Andy. So we might have. Well, to... no scheme, but the, the the wife did take the money. Give me a minute here. I'll check this. I'm saying more Mourinho wife divorce. Anyways, he's, he's, he's washed anyway, Mourinho. Mm. What is he? He must be well, isn't he? He's got to be 40. He's got to be 40. He can't be far off. His, his, his first fight, I, I was looking, I think his first pro fight was uh, 2002. 38? So he, 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 yeah. yeah. Didn't he well, fight so he, Sidorenko? Was that him? Vladimir Sidorenko? Yeah, he, yeah, he beat Sidorenko. Like, mate, you're going back a while there, aren't you? That'd be, what, 2007, something like that? Yeah, he, he beat Sidorenko, and then I think is when he went on that run of losses where he had a couple of hard luck ones that he might have nicked yeah. and stuff 2008, like that. 2008, 2009 were the two Sidorenko fights. Then he beat Maha Monshipur, who was involved in the greatest it hard was, was fight of all time. A couple of wins over Semeno, Para, Darchinian. Fuck me, he had a right good run, didn't he, Moreno? Yeah. And then he lost to Abner yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Chimito... fight was the bullshit fight, I think, wasn't it? Mm. Chimito Moreno pulled swerve of divorce claim. In a very odd twist, former World Bantamweight champion and Selmo Chimito Moreno is now denying that he is going through a divorce with his wife, Rosa Laguna, who also serves as his box manager and advisor. They were married in 2010. He now says it was some weird ploy against his enemies. My marriage is going extremely well. Me and my wife have never made a decision to separate. She loves me and I love her, Moreno said. Oh, that's fucking lovely. Mm. Ten bucks says she's in the basement. And as someone, <laughs> as someone says in the response, who the advising? fuck cares, man? <laughs> so it looks like he's got his shit together. So, yeah, happy. Well, we're wishing well in Japan anyway. That's all we can yeah, say. Yeah, that's all we can say at this Dude, point. That, seriously, one of the more underrated fighters of his year. Definitely, of his absolutely. Year in the lower yeah. way too. He I've was, forgotten he was about solid. that run he went on, Matty, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, he, he had a few hard luck ones in there. I think he had a split decision loss to Yamanaka, and then he lost by knockout in the rematch. Yeah, he lost um, to Payano as well. I remember yeah. the Sidorenko fights, definitely, but that's going back for me. That, I think that Payano fight might have been a technical decision, and it and it kind of yep, you're screwy, right, you're right. I think. Great knowledge. So, I, that's, that's where my, like, two months ago, I don't know what happened. Ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, uh, Marcus also said Ivan Mendy is a good test for Sam Noakes next week. Next week, we'll get to that shortly. If Noakes uh, got that stoppage, it'll be quite a statement indeed. Finally, Haney's paying just over two to one stop Garcia, which I'm pretty tempted by. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Marcus. Get well soon to Willie Limond and R.I.P. Gary Shaw. So there you go. That's quite the message from him. Let's just get rid of that. 
What else have we got here on the um, roster? Uh, Bean's back with his GBM promotions in Rotherham. Uh, Shaquille Thompson against Vladimir Georgiev. Uh, Kieran Malloy has signed with them, which I'm a bit surprised about. Left the Conlans. Uh, Tian and Bradley is a good prospect as well. And Huey Fury returns after three years out. He's been serving a tough time. I think, think he has he's his come... man strength now? I think he's got his man strength, yeah. He's coming back in a sixth round. And Matty against Konstantin Dobrovyshenko, who's 10, 15 and 1. So that could be a tough... Um... Tough outing for him there. But anyway, this is GBM Promotions, uh, Isra, Asif. So let's see how they get on. Uh, also, you mentioned this off-air earlier. I thought it was Pro Box, but it's not. It's OTX, Overtime Elite Arena. Big fan of these. Uh, Kurt Scobie's on the undercard, like him. And in the main event, Ismail Villarreal. I'm sure I've seen him fight somewhere before. Mm-hmm. Let me just check him out quickly. Lost to Callum Walsh. Yep, uh, I saw that fight. And Ardriel Holmes Jr. I think it's something to do with the Gwot or Franchon or one of them anyway, Ardriel. Now that was on Showbox. This is OTX against Brandon Adams, who once lost to one of the Charlos, but in his last fight, he beat Sergei Bahachuk. When was three... his last fight, though, Steve? Three years ago, three years ago, Matty. And he's back now. He's... <laughs> I don't know what he's been doing, to be honest. He has a win over Shane Mosley as well. Yeah. He's uh, had a odd little career, hasn't he? Um, I think he won... Uh, his uh, one of the uh, seasons of the contender for some he reason. He beat Kaitrov and Brunson and other punches of note. Yeah, yeah, that might have been where he fought Mosley Jr. Actually, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was in the final. Yeah, so it, he's. I mean, I three years on <laughs> three years in uh, on the shelf, though, Steve. I mean that that that's rough. Uh, and I and I mean now you just saw Bahuchik come out, and you're like, fuck, that was a quality win. Um, I don't know what the story is on his absence from the ring, if it was personal, professional, legal, whatever it might have been. But um, Villarreal, I mean, he's a, a tough opponent. I think I remember that fight with Holmes. Uh, if I recall, it could have gone either way. Um, he, he'll, uh, and, you know, the thing I'd worry most about is is going over the distance on that one. I, I think for some, that might be a 10-round fight. Um. And uh, I would just have to think that the the guy who's been staying active and uh, doesn't have the layoff is going to have a, a, a fair bit of, of an advantage in that fight. So um, I, I think uh, Adams is just very well might regret that uh, that uh, three year layoff. Uh, Johnny says, hasn't Tevin Farmer signed with them lot next door? Yeah, I think I saw Tevin Farmer turning up on the poster for this GBM promotions. <laughs> He's going to be fighting in England. <laughs> What the hell? He's on the Huey Fury card. I must have just signed the contract and not realised what he was signing, maybe. Kevin <laughs> Farmer versus Mickey Bay from Manchester. Oh, so. God, no. Please, no. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. Uh, on a serious note, uh, Andy, Marcus Bellinger did mention it, actually. The Willie Limond, uh, I think he did he have a stroke. I don't know, or mate. Was a seizure, there, I think, is what it was. was it a, a seizure, seizure of some yeah. sort. I was, I, was, I was tempted to drop a couple of text messages, but I didn't want to make his... No. Um, I didn't really want to kind of like even you know yeah. because in the day if I if I if I found out I didn't really then want to be saying look exactly you know what I'm saying it's, it's not good anyway whatever's it's gone not there, good yeah, and yeah. you know speculation and you don't need it in this situation mate just wish him the best and mm-hmm. you know it's it's it's, it's terrible but it, anyways I mean we'll talk about Willie as a fighter Willie was you know respected. Um, to to the point that Eric Morales would bring him back a number of times to his training camps in Mexico, and that that's how much. Yeah, didn't he, was... he fight Eric once? Yeah, beat he him did. in six rounds, mate. I it was the altitude fucked him big style because eh? he fought me. He fought him at I can't mean the altitude levels again, but it was something crazy down there. Eh? But anyways, he put up. You know, it wasn't so much the fighting that as well, but it was just the way he handled himself during camp and being there during fight week and that respected. You know what I'm saying? Didn't he, did, did, wasn't he blase, was, was respectful, went about his business in a professional manner and that, and it was picked up, and as I say, he he earned a bit of money off the back of it and that as well, in terms of coming back into previous camps and that, and we wish him the best and that. There's a few uh, Facebook accounts that I'm on in terms of Scottish boxers and stuff like that. Um, I had hoped to see something, maybe kind of saying what maybe what the issue was and that, but look, wish him the best. I just, I just uh, hope it's nothing serious, and that, and he, he, he pulls through, and that because uh, he's Christ, my age is it? He can't, he can't be any older than forty-five. 
I know if even that under yeah, yeah. me what age he is to be honest with you. He's 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 nay older than forty five, I don't think maybe a couple years older than us too, I think. Forty five anyway. exactly, there you go. 45, there you go. Yeah. So young family in that as well. So hopefully he pulls okay. through and there's not there's no lasting damage, that's the main thing is that as well. So oh, he's forty best of wishes to Wally Boy. Ricky Burns forty one, Craig Doherty forty four. Flip me, where is yeah, he? Yeah, the, the old doc. I remember. Hey, listen, see, oh, see, see when I gave up the football by the way, I went back to boxing. Yeah, I started training with the doc back, uh, um, back at Morrison's gym. Actually, but this would be around about oh, 2006, 2007. Some fucking man, the doc by the way. Fought Alex Arthur, didn't he? Did you aye, know? Aye, the body aye, shots aye, that killed him that night. Ex Commonwealth champion. Yep, he was. Good fighter. Right, what else have we got on the agenda here? Um, uh, they mentioned it earlier, actually, Saturday the 20th of April. Uh, Sam Noakes, he's quite the puncher, is Noakes. 13-0, and 13 knockouts, last seen beating up Luis Sylvester in the copper box. He's going in against Ivan Mende. This is quite the step up for him, but someone who's going to be sticking around. Mende, wasn't it a head clash last time? I think? Well, he lost to Baranchik in the Tottenham Stadium. That was on the Joshua undercard, I think. I was thinking I must be getting him mixed up with somebody else. Lost to Luke Campbell as well back in the day. I don't know who I was thinking of. Anyway, decent step up, Andy. He's obviously failed at a certain level, but he's never been stopped in his six losses. He's nearly 40, very experienced. For a young puncher like Noakes, he's going to learn a lot if he can get past Ivan Mendy, Andy. Yeah, Mendy's been there, mate, hasn't he? I mean, he's got power at a certain level. He's fought European countless times. He's fought, you know, Brancic. Um, who's it? Who's he fought Campbell, didn't he? Luke Campbell, yeah, eh? but six years ago, a while ago. Then I, but you know, he's been in with some top guys. Give me a second, I'm just gonna pull up his record because I'm sure he's fought some fucking names. Ah, that's right, he fucking beat Luke Campbell as well. He's fought him twice, yeah, that's right. He upset him and he was giving him his that's first right. loss, didn't he? That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, <laughs> I remember the oh, Edis Tatley, who's another one who can paint at European level. Um, he's got a win against Hakim Ben Ali. Oh, decent Euro level fighter, yeah, but could be just a, a, at this point for Sam Knox. I think it's just a matter of timing for him, actually. To be fair, I think he wins. Um, how he wins, I don't know. I think safe bet is obviously points, but if I tell you what, if he was to pull pull a, a stoppage victory off here, by it would be would be a statement. Mendy, what is he? Must be late 30s, but 38. never been stopped. 38, never been stopped. All about ambition at this point, that as well as can this guy pull it off. A big statement for him in that as well at this age to pick up the European title, but I think Sam Knox fresher just seem to have a bit of pop in that as well about him in that as well, and I do like a like, like a look at him. So I'm going to go Sam Knox. I'll say I'm going to go points actually. Yeah, points as well. I I'm going to go points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was getting Mendy mixed up with Michelle Sorrow. I was thinking about it with Fort Majumov and had the head clash and all. It's, it's hard when you watch all these. A niche boxers to try and remember who's who. On the undercard, Henry Turner's going in against Mendoza. Um, a few other fighters of interest. There's a, a young fellow making his debut over four rounds called Owen Lavin. He's from Ballyhornis. I remember the Ballyhornis Express. John Waldron from back in the day. He used to box out of Ireland. Good little fighter. Anyway, Owen Lavin. I'm not sure <laughs> if he should be doing his GCSEs, Matty, or not. But uh, here he is making his uh, four-round debut on the card next what week. What the fuck anyway, is that? I was going to make a joke about Owen being spelled backwards, uh, Niwo, but apparently not. <laughs> He's got two plugs in his forehead. What the fuck? <laughs> God, he must be about flipping 11. I never heard of him. But good, luck, good luck to the young fellow, I say. He needs to see the puberty test, that boy. <laughs> have any I'm bangs good. like an absolute monster, man? Let Big left hook laughing. Knocking people out for fun. Let's Ken get behind a, this. Kind of has an oddly shaped cranium, doesn't he? Oh, he can take a shot. I would imagine. I don't know. I don't, I'll have to Maybe. It's a big fucking target, actually. <laughs> the beast of Bally Boys. <laughs> the be uh, 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 that's a song title, by the way. Oh, it's, it's, it's good right now, isn't it? The beast of Bally <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, uh, Matty, have you seen anything? I know it's very niche. I'm not going to ask you about Lavin, by the way, but Thanks, Sam right. Noakes in the main event. He's clearly a puncher. He's been brought up. Mendy's coming to give him rounds. And this is the vacant European title. Good step up for Noakes, man. If he gets rid of Mendy, it'd be a hell of a statement. I I'm thinking points myself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mendy's been around for quite a while, and I, I don't think in his losses there's a very many stoppages among them. I'm trying to He's think. never been stopped at all. 
there, well, there you go. I mean, so that if you're looking at making a statement uh, against a guy, I mean, Mendy with, I mean, he's got to have like 50 fights at this point in time. He's got to be pushing 40, you'd think. Jeez. Uh, I mean, the guy, uh, if you can take him out, that's a statement, right? So, I mean, I think that's kind of one of those things that you have to be shooting for at this point in time is, you know, people have beaten him. Uh, you know, he's obviously a, a certain level. Nobody has stopped him. You're looking to prove yourself, get uh, get a little bit of buzz behind you from uh, people that uh, that know their stuff. Go out and stop a guy that hasn't been stopped in 50 contests. That uh, That's the way to go about it. It certainly is. Uh, MB says apparently because Gwyn versus Chamberlain was a non-title fight, but Gwyn lost the fight. He had to relinquish his European title. That's why it's vacant. And Michael Thompson makes a good point. Big fan of the EBU title. We've said it before, Andy. Tough level usually, isn't it? It, it is a really good yeah. underrated title level. I think you get these Italians, these French guys, Germans, even the Eastern Europeans come over. It's a real good building block towards world level, I think. Mate, it's got to be a level some of your fighters have got to go through. I mean, what I'm noticing with a lot of Eddie's fighters, and probably to Frank as well, you know, okay, there's a sprinkle of the European title coming on some of their cars, but a lot of it is these trinket belts to get rankings with the IBF or WBO or type of shit and that. Whereas fighting guys at this level and that, I mean, that heavyweight guy for, for Ukraine would be ideal for a guy like... Um, for the UK, like a Fraser Clark or something mm -hmm. you know, along the lines. Um, good payday, 20, 30,000 euros, possibly. No, you know, it's stuff that really end of the day. It's a fucking, you know, it's a few months loving wage at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been active. The title at least has been active over a few divisions over the last few weeks and that as well. So, um, it serves its purpose at the end of the day. And if you can prove yourself as being the king of Europe in that end of the day, and that then really back in the day, that was your then step up to world class. Once you proved it domestic, Commonwealth, European level, and that then you were ready to show that you were up at world level by that point. So I think it gets skipped over a, you know, by a number of fighters and it's about time they started going through it because as you say, there's a lot of good you know in terms of levels that there'll be a lot of good fighters that I mean you, you talk about Jack Kolkai who came up through that level. Jack Kolkai is a good fighter. Hmm you know, 30, we were too old now, but uh, Nathan Cleverly, again, we mentioned him, you know, but okay, he, he, he filled at a certain level, but he was, you know, he, learned, he learned it there, that was a hard fight against Karo Mura for a European title. Karo Mura went on to fight um, Hopkins. Yeah. But, you know, so Bernard Dunn back in the day, do you remember? Yeah, he Bernard won Dunn, the European no. title against Asian Pickering, made defense, defenses against Raido Valstad, uh, Yelusinov or Yerlinov, whatever you call the Jalilov, Jal something like that, the uh, Uzbek Kazakh, whatever he was. And then he went in and got well, behind in the round by Kiko. But well, Willie, Willie, is, yeah, well Willie I was there the night he won it against Paul Highland yeah. in Limerick. Absolutely. Paul McCluskey won it against Daniel Rassia. I was there in Letty Kenny when he defended against Barry Morrison, got in the fight against Amir Khan and eventually Brady's Prescott. Great building round again. Yep. I mean, in, in all my years as, as, as a boxing fan following it, I mean, that's been over 30 years now. As my understanding of the sport was always that if you're a European champion, you were automatically granted top 10 status of the WBC. You know, at that point, you had you only had the WBC and the WBA and the IBF at that point. And that, as well. that was your three main bodies. You won the European title, you were WBC top 10 guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It means you were in the running then for a, you know, for a world title fight. And you, you had earned it because, guy, mate, you had to walk the fucking gauntlet at British level. Never mind Commonwealth, that. you had to walk it at British level. Sometimes they even have rematches at British level. I guess the same, you know, and then go to European level and that. I mean, Jim, Jim Watt, Charlie Nash, mate, fucking hell, you know, talk about a violent affair, that one. You did think Jim, you know, you lost Jim Watt, gentleman, that was his nickname, gentleman Jim Watt. The fucking dude was throwing headbutts at fucking Charlie Nash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is, yeah, this is European level. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Charlie Nash getting knocked out off Italian guy, um, Joey, Joey, I forget his fucking name, it was a bad knockout. You know, European title, but it serves its purpose, and the uh, guys like uh, along that out need to be fighting it because this is where you this is where you earn, where you learn and where you earn. Yeah, 
Hundred percent. Right before we move on to the Hayani Garcia chat, uh, undercard, etc. A quick one, uh, Mate. This week we found out that uh, Jerome Boots Ennis has followed Subriel Matias out of the PBC. Seems like they're all leaving and over to Eduardo. Talk of David Morel maybe being next as well. Ennis was supposed to defend his IBF title against Cody Crowley, who turned down six hundred thousand dollars to fight. I don't know. I don't quite know who was advising him to do that. Either way, Boots now is out of this sort of weird contract with no boxing or Cameron Duncan, who's now passed away. Uh, he was never really signed with the PBC. He's, he's cut ties with them all together, like Matthias, gone over to Eddie. And I suppose we just have to wish him well, really, and hopefully that he gets some decent fights and some decent paydays that his talent deserves, because he's clearly in his prime, shouldn't be wasting away on the shelf. Well, we still wonder <clears throat> how long he could be at 147. He's he's a big guy. Hopefully, he gets a title fight. Um, the one thing interesting with him, maybe you know, with him over at Matchroom uh, being on DAZN, is maybe um, if he is short lived for 147 pounds, that opens up the prospect of maybe a 154 pound clash between him and Virgil Ortiz, who's over at Golden Boy. So um, we'll see what fights are there for him. And if they happen to feed him uh, Connor Ben to uh, get that 147 pound belt, well, I guess that's just what the sanctioning bodies are going to have to do, Steve. Well, Andy, that was my next point before we moved on. I was going to say the Conor Ben fight, as much as we sort of shit on it, it's going to be inevitable now, isn't he? That he signed up with Eduardo. He'll probably get rid of Crowley, first of all, and then move on. But Ben's going to probably be in the plans. I know they're mentioning Stanley Onis here. He's fighting Maestre. Yeah, but that's that's back in PBC, isn't it? That So, yeah, it yeah. looks looks to me boots against Ben, probably. Uh, mate, I mean, I've seen this news. I mean, to ask you guys, that what do you think about it? Because... Boots in terms of like some management and there's been issues outside the ring in that in terms of who's promoters and yeah. managers have been in that. I mean, is this is he free and clear now? This I think he is, know. and I'm happy with that because he was he was signed up, wasn't he, to Duncan? They didn't get him the fights that they promised him contractually. This Chris Middendorf, he was he seems to get his his finger in every pie, was involved as well. The PBC wouldn't go all in on him because obviously the contractual issues meant they weren't getting the full benefit. He shook all them off now, Andy, and he signed with Eddie, which I, right. I just think is a good is a good move. Yeah, it's a it's a good move provided that Eddie does does the right thing. Yes, because it's about fucking me. Where is he now? He must be. He, he must be in the the later half of his twenties now. He must be 26, 27. 27, I think. Yeah. Time Eddie will promote him if nothing else, and he's already got Andy Cruz from the same stable. Mate, but the thing is, but Eddie, Eddie's going to fucking tell us, you know, what, you know, what we, what we were saying two years ago, but he's not had the fights to prove it yet. And how, how the fuck is Eddie going to get him to fight Terence Crawford, for example? Not going to happen. No. Eddie doesn't seem to make the biggest meaningful fights for his fighters when it's got to happen for the fans and for the fighters themselves. Boots Ennis, we say two years ago, Steve, that he was the future of the division. All mm. he needed was the fights, and he's not had them. And we're still waiting to this point. So, again, I don't want Eddie... You're saying Conor Ben. What the fuck is that going to do for Boots Ennis at this point? Boots Ennis destroys Conor Ben, in my opinion, right? So, well, yeah, that's... would that make us happy? Yeah, but the, mate, it's a waste of fucking. It's a waste of training camp. It's a waste of time for us. It's a waste of time for the fans, right? Ben's not going to clear himself, right? So in that in that regard, unless Eddie's going to put him in with expenses, they're going to happen. For example, right? Eddie's going to feed Ben to him, though. I think though, isn't he? Because Ben's no use to him now. I, I think that. He well, might... was that? I mean, who? What about Josh Taylor against Catro Winner? There's that oh, possibility, well, for example. Yeah. I see Stanley Onis has been I think he's been cleared to fight again, but yeah, he's fighting Maestro though, isn't he? On the Canelo on the card. Yeah, PBC. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, if you want a tough fight with Vanessa, I'd like to see him maybe fight a Butaya, but I don't know if he's still tied with the PBC. I don't know if he will be allowed to kind of let go or come across and that People behind. are mentioning Virgil Ortiz, yeah, which is what MB is saying. But the, the the fact of the matter is, Andy, we've seen that even though they were both under the DAZN banner. And one's with Oscar, one's with Eddie, and DAZN can't force them to push their fighters together very easily, oh. is what you would think. Yeah, but Oscar and Eddie have had chats at least, I know that much. Well, um, course, yeah. So hopefully if something can be made. But then what we're saying is Boots, Boots holds a, a title at this point, right? So yeah. you think he's going to be marketable and people are going to want to fight him, but unless he's going to be Crawford. That's the, that's the thing though as well. There's nobody so, else. Mm. Sorry, mate. When you go, but there's nothing else but, I want to see him fight. But ju just on, even guys, just on the on the the boots, anything like you got to think PBC 
I mean, his economic appeal has got to be a driving factor in playing a part in this decision of the zone coming to scoop him up. Because if he was driving numbers for PBC, he'd be in their plans. They seem to go for guys who can generate revenue, like they stick with the old fucking guard, or Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, guys, are kind of, guys who are tried and tested on the old HBO model. They know the numbers behind him. Boots is kind of unproven. He doesn't really talk too much. He's a supreme talent, but he isn't who wants some club. And it's like, how do they get their fucking bread out of uh, Boots Ennis, especially if they have no kind of contractual obligations with Crawford? Um, what the fuck could they do with him? So they got rid of him. Like, I don't, you know, I think that's, they got rid of him because they couldn't get any any money out of him. And that's sad in today's climate, but it is what it is. It's always been the way, then the that way point of the sport. Then is, if PBC mm. kind of get in the fights with their roster, what the fuck's Eddie going to do with him? But Eddie keeps, saying, Eddie, he, Eddie can't get him fight. Eddie can't be Cody Crowley first of all, isn't it? That's gonna Eddie's be that's going to give him some no mark that we've never seen. Launch him on the zone. He'll splatter him. He'll make him look really good, and he'll keep the fucking hope of the, keeping this fight going with Conor Ben. Meanwhile, he knows fucking full well that Conor Ben can't get back in the ring, so he's going to be dangling that big payday, huge fight in the UK. Boots in his versus Conor Ben. Conor Ben's a global superstar in the UK. Boot you boot. Global superstar in the UK. Global UK superstar. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this fucking shit is going to. You can't fight in the UK. <laughs> but the welterweight landscape is not um, out of base. Like it depends on how long uh, Boots is going to hang around at fucking forty seven. If there can't be money fights made there for him, because it doesn't seem like that big, big, big payday is there from that big breakout fight is there for him to happen unless Crawford uh, goes that way. But that that doesn't look likely at the, at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's. I mean, he's a great, he's a great fighter. I give him that. I'm not going to take anything away from Boots Ennis as a fighter. What I've seen of him in the ring on off the eye test, he's very good. But. I don't know what I, I don't know if it's like a marquee side. And definitely in terms of talent, he's probably one of the best fighters on the zone. But in terms of bringing subscriptions of the zone up, I don't know. Uh, Rob, you're very welcome. What did you see over the weekend? Hopefully, nothing for your sake. Ross County versus Rangers. <laughs> 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 um, no, I saw, I didn't see much. I saw that Zephyr Barrett stabbed. I actually, on my, on my boxing news predictor, I predicted the the bar KO. Um so I saw that one that was quite a good um performance. Didn't see any of the women's fights and I didn't bother watching big baby big baby bullshit. <laughs> um, you, you took our advice? Yeah. Yeah. I, when I saw all the reviews I said ah no like I'm not gonna fucking torture myself. I know the outcome anyway it's a fucking nomad shit performance and we don't know any more than we did last week about big baby fucking Whatever the fuck big baby he is. Big yeah. baby. What's the sick? What, which big baby is he again? Oh, he's the real right. big baby. Yeah. Anderson. Yeah. He's the well Anderson behaved one. Yeah. yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Neither of them are. They're two big babies. <laughs> one's fucking taking police on high speed chases, the other one's <laughs> jacking cars and shit. It sounds like they're doing like the fucking crappiest version of uh, Gone in 60 Seconds that one could ever imagine because they keep getting caught by the police. <laughs> big bold babies. Big bold babies, exactly. Right, let's get on to the big one for next week. Not the big baby. Well, the couple of big babies, especially King Roy. He's going in for the WBC super lightweight title against Devin Haney in the Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York, surprisingly enough, not Las Vegas. Don't know why on earth they're going to New York, but it doesn't look like anybody's buying any tickets anyway. So we wish them well. Uh, as for the undercard, Matty, it's not even on box Rex, so you know it's going to be a good one. It's, it's on like ESPN.com. It's like when Frank Smith turns up in the promo photos for Matchroom, you just know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, we've got Arnold Barboza Jr., who was supposed to step in if King Roy had a complete meltdown to fight Haney. That was the plan, I was yeah. told. He's going That'd against Sean, best for everyone, eh? but... exactly. Sean McComb, the public nuisance from Belfast, who uh, hid my laptop once. Uh, back to me, uh, Melakuz. <laughs> <laughs> Melakuz, yes. Well, he He's jouster, that guy. Beck the bully is going in against a French guy called uh, Pierre de Bombay. Uh, John Scrappy Ramirez is always good fun against David Jimenez. Might be That's a good, a good fight, fight. That. That's a good is, fight. Yeah, I think it is. And Gustavo Vittori is an unknown Argentine going in against Charles Bad News Conwell. The good news for Charles is that he's now got a promoter finally, a former Olympian, talented guy, couldn't get a break. And finally, he's got a break on this undercard matter. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking in my head for a minute. I'm like, God, with a name like Conwell, you kind of think maybe he's the missing link in the whole big baby crime syndicate thing. <laughs> um, anyhow, it would. Uh, it, 
it, it's good to see him, but you never know with these unknown Argentines. You say he's undefeated. Is he much? Uh, has he got much of a puncher's record, Steve? I'm not sure if he is undefeated, to be honest. I could be giving you some erroneous information. I could be mixing him up with Fabian Maidana. You know, all these guys sort of roll into one. Let me just check him quickly. Vittori, I recognise the name. I'm sure I've seen him fight before. Oh, no. He's, no, he's, he's not undefeated. He's got 16 losses. What? <laughs> Anything can happen in this one. (laughs) If it's the same guy, (laughs) yeah, he's 29, 16, and one. He's been stopped 11 times. So, yeah, I think uh, we all know what's going to happen here. If it's definitely the right guy, let me check. He fought Julian Williams. Matt, are you thinking of a draw for the parley or no? (laughs) (laughs) He fought Julian Williams earlier this year and got stopped in the second round. What was that? 160. What weight's Conwell? Is he 160? 154. Uh, must be the same guy then, Adnick Gustavo, David Vittori. Yeah. Oh, well, we don't hold much hope out for him. I don't think matter. <laughs> what a fucking stupid <laughs> fight. Anyhow, what was the next one up? <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, you, we've got uh, John the Scrappy him- Ramirez against David Jimenez. Ramirez is somebody's brother, isn't he? Is he Jose Ramirez's brother? What, did I, I make that up? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Should not. Maybe do some research, shouldn't I? But I just can't be bothered. He- but he's a you know he's a he's a good fighter. He's got a lot of people who are uh, who are well behind him. He's got a, a good punch. He's uh, he's definitely got charisma. Um, he's got a hell of a, of a fight background. Um, but he he does throw a little bit chin up in the air, um, and it could get him into trouble. Uh, Jimenez has been in some uh, really uh, good fights. He was um, he won that close fight with a what's his freaking bucket in order to get the uh, to get the uh, shot oh, at uh, Artem yes. Delakayan, and then he had a really close fight with Delakayan right, um, yes. as well. You know he so he's um he, yeah he's a, a, a very capable fighter. This is a, a real test for Ramirez. I think this is for an interim something or fucking other uh, belt. So um, yeah, we we will we'll see how this one goes for him. But I I think this is a a very um, uh, important fight in the development of this young fighter and uh he's one he definitely needs to get through to be able to get to the top level and finally we've got beck the bully who to be fair is always in exciting fights really isn't well he usually is i suppose he's a good body puncher he can definitely bang nice hairdo he's going in against pierre hubert de bombe who is 22 0 and 1 12 knockouts 32 years of age from france the bomb exactly fought sladan janjanin i've seen him fight somebody else before actually who have I seen him in again? Must have been a nice nice for the commentators. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember who he fought. But anyway, uh, yeah, this guy hasn't fought anybody. Johan Bloyer, oh, he's a, a journeyman from France. Last fight against Derek Findlay, who has just the 29 losses on his record. And Derek he's been Findlay's active been nearly... fighting for 20 years now. Yeah, he, he, he's de Bombay's latest victim in the fourth round of a six over in Atlantic City almost a year ago. Where the hell have they dug this guy from, man? <laughs> I I don't know, man. It's a uh, I, I guess uh, you know uh, it's going to be a bad night for the French. It happens; they're used to it. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens with uh, Beck the bully. I mean, you never know. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, didn't uh, didn't Rosado spark him cold out? Um, so, he did, but uh, then you. Yeah, yeah, he so beat I mean, him in the rematch, didn't he? Last fight was it his last fight? I think it was his last fight, wasn't he? Beat I think he had one more after that. Did he he right, won okay. by stoppage for yeah. some reason. But uh, I, you know, expected you'd think that Beck's going to end up getting this one by knockout. But uh, we'll see. I mean, he does have that one thing to watch out for, and that's his Quinn. His chin might be just a little questionable. Yeah, oh, Atlantis Fox was his last fight. That's right. He stopped him. Yeah, he looked pretty decent actually. Oh, there you are. The Sladan Janjan in a mystery has been solved, Matty. It was Beck the Bully who beat him four fights ago. So they have a common opponent. They're... Did they both stop him? Um, Beck stopped him in the third round. And De Bombay. Let me see. Uh... Can't find him on De Bombay's record. Oh, he stopped him in the fifth round. <laughs> oh, this is nip and tuck stuff, isn't it, this? Yeah, uh, let, let, let's let's see that happen. Let it let let the bomb base surprise us. I, I I could use a surprise on that undercard because I kind of think, you know, I mean, obviously, other than Ramirez, that uh, the undercard's a little bit lacking. So a little bit of a surprise in there to throw us off would be nice. Would be anything from the undercard that you're interested in, Matty? I suppose Barbos and McComb might be decent. Barbos not the biggest puncher, so McComb could mess him about for a few rounds, maybe. 
Macomb fight anyone decent? Yeah, Macomb beat Sam Maxwell in his last fight. He got stopped by Gavin Gwynn to the body, which is a that's not a good look, is it really? If you're going up to sort of world level, which we think Barboza is world level, probably, Andy. Yeah, he's been kind of like mixing up there, mate. To be fair, to be honest, if he doesn't pull this one off, mate, I think he's probably done there now, to be honest, isn't he? Mm. Who's he fighting again? Uh, Barboza against Sean Macomb. Sean Macomb. He's from Belfast, isn't he? Yeah, he's from Belfast, yeah. No big knockout puncher, though, to be honest, is he? So... No, he's a bit more of a mover. Yeah. Mm. He'll fiddle Barboza around. Yeah, I was, going to say, I was just going to say that, mate. I was just going to say Barboza points, but he's going to have to work for it and probably chase it as well, to be fair. Um, Mikuzlev. Um, who's he fighting? Fox, you said? No, no Fox. Who no, he's it? fighting Pierre de Bombay, French the French bomb. I don't know, mate. I don't know about that one. Uh, and Ramirez against Jimenez. Uh, could be anything. I'll probably... That might be a decent fight. Though, it will be a decent scrap, to be fair. Jimenez is, 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 is a good fighter. Matty mentioned Della Kynan. It was a um, close fight. Was it Wembley, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was one of Frank's cards, I'm sure, yeah, actually. Yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jimenez, he's, he's, just, he's one of the B-sides fighters, but he's a good fighter. Just hasn't got the pot, but he's a um, good amateur background in that as well. But he'll probably... Considering that Ramirez is an Oscar fighter, and he, but is he... Is he no 13 with 13 knockouts? 13 or 13 knockouts? He's 13 with 9 knockouts. 9 knockouts. Yeah. Um, he's and from imagine, Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez, I know he is. Fun. And imagine... Uh, and uh, Jimenez is, is... You know, he will be top billing. He'll be... Well, saying that, I'm expecting to be top billing at least. I'm expecting to be competitive. But I would imagine if it's a close fight, I would think Ramirez is going to get a nod. Yeah. Right, on to the main event anyway. Let's not mess about for much longer. As I said, it's in Brooklyn. We'll go to you first of all, Rob. Here's an amateur psychology for you. Where's Rob, Garcia's Cliff head at, man? Give, give me a minute, man. Give me Cliff notes. Out. This is going to be a fucking monologue we're getting here. Well, he, he's, <laughs> he's had a borderline breakdown. He's admitted he to drinking and smoking weed. He's talking Shagging about a lot of well, Illuminati man, interventions and kidnappings. He's broke up with a wife and child. Where is he at mentally, Rob? Is he a man on the edge or Maybe a remarkable a troll willing to push every conceivable boundary? I think Label. he's just a little shit. Um, <laughs> that's fucking after earning 25 million the easy way compared to, no, I don't say the easy way as a professional fighter, but the easy way compared to the rest of the guys in his division. Um, he's marketed himself well. He's been momaged, as the fucking phrase goes <laughs> these days, by his momager. And um, he's a little shit. He's a drama queen. Like, you've seen it all over the time. Remember, he's bathing in tears one time. Remember, he, the girl leaked the messages that he sent her um, tried to fucking make her feel bad because she had hooked up with someone else. And he was like, I guess I'm going to bathe in tears this whole flight. His whole fucking monologue sounds like a fucking Drake ballad. Um, so I think he's a little shit. I think he's after talking himself into a couple of big fights. I believe he wants to be active, but I believe he wants to be active in the boxing world because it drives the brand of Ryan Garcia. Yes. So I think that's why he fights. He doesn't give a fuck if he wins or loses. He'll talk shit. He'll sell pay-per-views and the brand of Ryan Garcia will go on. And I think I'm after figuring it out after a couple of weeks what, what the fucking play was actually here. I think he's copying Kanye West with the trolls. Um, the Bohemian Grove stuff. I don't believe a fucking word of it. I seen him like do the fucking interview with Alex Jones and that. Like nothing is clear. All this is just spoofing and regurgitated kind of QAnon fucking angles or Bill Cooper angles. If you want to go further back, but it's oh yeah, I love a bit of Bill Cooper. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's uh, whether Ryan Garcia is trying to warn us about a totalitarian one world government or not, I don't know. Like totalitarian uh, or, TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> totalitarian TikTok, more like it. Um, <laughs> So fucking. <laughs> so I, 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 in terms of a breakdown on the fight, listen, um, Devin Haney, we had many detractors, and we were them. <laughs> there were us. We were Devin Haney detractors. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. necessarily because of his ability, but because, more because of all the talk around him, and he hadn't actually fucking fought anyone. He wasn't with any of the big name promoters. We thought he was a bit boring. He, he overcame. It. Yeah, he got the email championship. Of course, that leaves the hardcore sour. Um, but I think over the course of the last couple of fights, even if you think Lomachenko beat him or not, I think he's proved himself that he's a better fighter than Ryan Garcia at this stage. Okay. 
Garcia has done fuck all in the last few years apart from lose the tank and swallow it, by the way, which he definitely did. He swallowed it. He abandoned the game plan in the only fight out since then. He looked terrible because I like to watch the kind of and when there's a big fight on, I go and watch back like the the they're both of their last fight. And Ryan Garcia looked terrible in that last fight, got tagged high up. And I think even though Haney showed a lot of power against Pro that we hadn't seen before, I think Haney beats him off the stick, breaks him down, and he might quit again. He might quit again. Mm-hmm. But I don't I, I don't think Garcia is gonna even if he gets his attention, I think Haney's kind of showed his chin a little bit. The Naris caught him, he had him wobbling or whatever, but he couldn't capitalize on it. Lamachenko caught him a number of times as well. I can't see him getting ironed out at 140. And we don't know if Garcia's power is actually carried up because the last performance doesn't tell us anything. He was fighting a punch bag. So in terms of the you know the event, anything could happen. So expect anything. Expect anything in the weigh-in, the build-up, the aftermath. Could be a fucking Oliver McCall moment in here somewhere. Yeah, a fucking, you yeah. know what I mean? A preacher okay. coming into the ring. You don't know what the mm-hmm. fuck is going to happen. Right. But um, I think it'll be onwards and upwards for Haney then afterwards. And he's really going to get Tank into his mouth and start calling out Tank for a massive, massive fight or one of the other guys, Shakur. Um, but yeah, I understand the reasons Haney's taking this. It, it's all beneficial for Haney. Bill has been out on tour. It's building his star, and Garcia is benevolent in that way. He's he's the fucking he's the money generator of the sport. And it's a pity. All I'd say all to say all that to say this. It's a pity that Ryan Garcia doesn't take boxing more serious because a couple of optical wins. He's only a couple of optical wins away from being fucking one of the biggest money generators ever. And that's only good for, you know, when it's legit fighters as opposed to YouTubers and fucking bullshitters and the heavyweights who only fight once every four years and all that. Like, it'd be good to have somebody like him leading the charge if he actually backed it up, but he won't. And the outcome is inevitable for me. I think Haney Stoppage. Haney Stoppage for Rob. Uh, uh, leave your comments in the chat. The boys will be picking as well. Andrew Thicket says, Garcia being walked to the ring by Alex Jones. I'd love to see Alex Jones coming in as the fan man, to be honest. That would be mm. good. Mm. Uh, Haney will tune him up, no problem, says Michael that Thompson. That was silver foil on as well. Yeah, he <laughs> well so, somebody in the chat said the statue of Moloch is curious. Yeah, no, I, I believe in Bohemian Grove. I just don't believe Ryan Garcia was out there having a good time. <laughs> yeah, just to clarify. Yeah, yeah just to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Bohemian Grove, like, assuredly exists. Like, the people in the town and shit, like, no, say Yeah, and they are out there saying man shit. Tell you dressed about up it. like fucking, you know what I mean? Wild yeah. man, like doing do wild shit. Let's, that's another part. That's fucking uh, yeah. all yeah. sorts yeah. of people do all sorts of fucking weird shit. But isn't it strange, guys, that if you were to put Bill Haney and Ryan Garcia next to each other and say, which one of these people at a party do you think is more likely to pull you aside to tell you all sorts of crazy shit about the government? And it was Ryan Garcia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I put, think it just goes to show you, you can't trust appearances. You should you put never Ryan Garcia, anyone. Ryan Garcia, Bill Haney, and Bill Cooper in a room together. <laughs> <laughs> Only one person's coming out. Thomas uh, Newman says uh, Garcia's Oscar De La Hoya on fast forward. <laughs> don't, don't give me a reason to call the FBI, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Michael Thompson says Haney rounds 7 to 12. MB says, I don't think he could beat Devin Haney, even at his best. Haney better all round, except. The power. The beatbot boot says Garcia by early stoppage, three to four rounds. Okay. Johnny says Garcia quitting again. Uh, Mate, Garcia has got that explosive hand speed. We do know that. Getting past the Haney jab, as Rob said, is going to be an issue if he manages that. Trying to get the left hook off quickly is going to be his best option. But can he do it before Haney grabs hold of him with those octopus like arms? I, I don't think Garcia has that great of a, sh- a shot here unless he, he can find a, a home for that left hook. But, you know, the thing about Haney when he throws that jab is he's, he's pretty damn good about, about keeping his, his right hand in a, in a, in a good position. So I wouldn't count on Garcia being able to, to find a home for that hook, especially since they know that that's what he's coming in there looking for. Um, I, I kind of agree with Rob. I think considering Garcia's mental state, the how Haney has looked better at 140 pounds. He dropped Regis Progre even though he didn't stop him. Um, I, I'm leaning towards him possibly getting a stoppage. And it might not be a big punch Ryan Garcia on the floor. It just might be Ryan Garcia in the corner. I hate saying about them because I'd like to he's a, he's got some some abilities. He's 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 fast at times he can be accurate he's got power um he obviously has a following you know he could be something good for boxing but he, he's kind of got to get it together and i mean regardless of anything else it kind of sounds like he has some 
uh, unresolved trauma that he kind of needs to deal with. And he uh, has to learn how to become a father at this point in time. So I, I, I wish the best for him, but I, I think all this stuff is kind of stacking up where it just, it, it doesn't look good for Garcia at all. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I, I haven't looked at I'm not sure if fucking being a father is high on his list of priorities. He divorced the baby mother the day after the baby was born. I I know. (laughs) You're just insane. I mean, but if you want to be a man, you still got to be a dad. You still got to be a father to that kid, right? If you want to be a man. Um, So I'm just kind of curious here. I want to kind of see what, uh, if they got odds out on the stoppage on that one. I um, think as well, Matty, just off the top of my head now, I'm thinking he needs to go and put a performance in in the ring no matter what he does. He can do the crazy shit beforehand, do the crazy shit afterwards. But I think if he messes people about, like someone has said, oh, he's, you know, he's going to do all these antics or, I don't know, like an Oliver McCaw moment or he's going to climb out the ropes. I think if he does that, he'll fuck up his brand for the future, for potential future paydays. I think if he goes there, puts his balls on the line, doesn't quit, gives it a good go, and then goes back to the stupid shit afterwards, I think he'll be all the better for it. If he if he fucks people over and they pay to watch the main event and he starts crying and pull, jumps out the <laughs> ring after two rounds, I think that'll be the worst possible look for him, even worse than every, anything that goes before or afterwards, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, we'll see if that happens. I, I'd, I'd like to think it's not going to be that explicitly bit shit, but we'll find out. Um, it's... Haney is is interesting enough. So Rob Haney's paying about five to two for the knockout, which seems slim based on the fact he hasn't had a stoppage uh, since Abdullayev. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, it's, it's basically just, yeah, one to two I'd take, for the. I'd take decision. a bit of that. I take I take a piece of the stoppage because the stoppage can come anyway. It can come by quitting the corner, like you said. It could come by fucking. Or oh, I fucking dislocated my knee or whatever the fuck he could say. He could just swallow it. So, yeah, I think that's decent money. More likely fucking rank uh, Devin Haney wins every round or a 10-2 or something like that. But um, I just can't see, I cannot see. Obviously, uh, Darcy has a puncher's chance. And like you said, he's shown something along the way that he has some kind of power. But fucking Luke Hammer was before COVID, man. You know what I mean? It's fucking, mm. it's a long time ago, like. And he's had the big layoff as well, Rob. After that, do you remember the the Campbell? Was it after the Campbell fight? He had that yeah. big sort of mental yeah, health. Yeah, hiatus in the uh, yeah, but he was juiced to fuck man. He was oh, like Aaron well, Schwarzenegger he, at one thirty five, like one hundred percent. But yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, I can't see any other winner other than Haney. But I hope it's a hope it delivers as a good fight. Like if if Haney if Gassi actually goes out and makes a fucking fight out of it and it wobbles Haney or something or makes him have to fucking give him a different look or something to think about be like hugely interesting and like I said a million times the best thing for the sport will be that Ryan Garcia goes out and knocks Devin Haney out in spectacular fashion but I can't mm-hmm. fucking see it like, yeah, no right. chance considering that you Rob I almost you know and all sorts of bullshit that can happen I, I kind of like the fight to uh, to not go the distance at 7 to 4 is that not going to distance either way? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, it says or so, a, yeah. Yeah, or a no contest or a cut causes it to go to the cards. You cover a fair amount of bases there. I mean, you're losing a smidge of value, but not so much where I think I'd like to put it all in, in all my eggs in one basket. Uh, Thomas Newman says she'll take bets on how fast Oscar leaves the arena. I was thinking that earlier, actually. The whisper in the ear that someone was out well, to kill him. Which, you don't know if he's leaving the arena like to go for sure or if he's just going to the restroom to, to take a bit off the back of a toilet. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, Garcia can land something big. I don't rate Haney's chin too much, says MB. I'm not sure. You like just see Bernard line. Hopkins if he goes into the toilet. Bernard right, exactly. Bernard, Bernard will be there in the bathroom big. ready for him. Uh, what else? Have Oscar, got? Bill, and Bernard in the bathroom. It's definitely not a children's book. Yeah, I um, I think now that he's moved up in weight, Oscar's always in the bathroom with a Bill in face. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Haney. That's a great double um, entendre. I like it. Uh, Os- uh, I think uh, Haney's chin's actually not too bad. I think he will quit, says Thomas Newman. The new he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about us. Uh, Garcia has more chance against Haney than he did against Tank. Well, yeah, I suppose because Haney's not as explosive. What are you thinking, Andy? About what, mate? I'm going to go with uh, Haney for stoppage, mate. Sorry, I was on fucking mute there. Uh, Haney stoppage, mate. Um, probably just keeping it in the latter half of the fight. Um, listen to all everybody was saying. The mental issue with Garcia has been flagged how many years ago? Remember he was at the ring for a period of time. Was it after Luke Campbell or before Luke Campbell? Yeah, after went. Campbell, yeah. Um. This, this latest episode, but usually in these situations, that I'm a bit kind of like over, you know, slightly kind of like 
go overboard with it and think, look, oh, he's going to get iced and that, you know, look at the crazy aspect and that, and then he's bang, he fucking turns the fucking script and he somehow, the, the craziness all of a sudden becomes genius, that type of thing, but I just don't see it with Garcia. He hasn't got, apart from that left hook, he's, he's, he's always, to me, been a fighter that's been IG kind of trained. He's always been on that kind of cobra bag, you know, he's always been social social media kind of like qualified type, type stuff. That's how he makes his money. He's done fantastically well to get, you know, make whatever he's done in terms of a fighter. But in terms of like so what he's proven, I, I just don't see it, mate. And I expect Haney, who in terms of him moving up in weight, he looks fantastic, you know, in terms of output. Um, I expect him to look good. He'd be, he'd be wanting to make a statement as well in terms of like what's been said. He has quietly went about it, whereas Garcia just seems to be in a rambling, absolute pathetic mess. Just doesn't bode well. And I see, remember we were saying like the, the other week there, remember like Ali was like before listen fight, he was like his heart rate was like fucking stratosphere type levels. People think he was going to have a heart attack and this was like the you know, you know, method behind the madness and that. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a small yeah, screen kind of thing. Yeah, really, but I don't think, for him. I don't think he's good him. enough to Kaiser Souza's into yeah. like per- putting in the performance to back it. Basically, I get where he's coming from. It's a kind of a, it's a, it's a ruse. Like you know what I mean? It's I don't believe it for a second. I don't believe any of that fucking the nonsense he's coming out with. I just think that he, in his own head, he probably thinks that is some marketing plan. Do you know what I mean? He's gone full Kanye West, like he's right, fucking off at the deep some, end. Yeah. yeah. And then if he if he was to go in and knock out Devin Haney, then like that would make the brand so much bigger. But it's not going to happen. Do you get me? Like, the thing is, yeah, that thing as well, maybe he's, he's been through all this charade, going through social media, getting his Twitter account cancelled or you know suspended, his IG suspended, going on with that. What's, he, what's that dickhead's name? He got interviewed by again. Alex, what's his shit? Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones. I mean, yeah. what can I say? Career suicide, man. He's so. But- but he wasn't it giving it like it was it was so obvious that at that stage that the whole thing was a fucking a roost. Like it was a whole the whole thing is he's trying to do the Kaiser Soze thing and then appear like as if you know he's fucking in that world. You imagine those people that follow him are kind of very similar to the fucking Jay Paul audience. Do you know that way they swallow flies? Yeah. Like so it's kind of a bit WWE edgy. Try to draw in the extra extra pool, whatever he's got, but mate, he's gonna have to deliver this time because if he was it you who mentioned about if he, if he ended up pulling the kind of mental kind of break doing crying after the fight and that? Look, he's done after that. If he pulls that after this fight, he has got to step up and deliver. His time has got to be now. Yeah, he but if you're making not, ten, tens of millions I, of dollars, he's going to afford to be done. Not, <laughs> mate, he cannot turn up here and think to himself, listen, oh, yeah, I turned up, I tried my best. Now, look, listen, the, you've talked the about the, you got to back it up now. The thing about the mental health thing is that it's such a delicate area because these days, obviously, there's more awareness about it than ever. And obviously, you know, we've spoken about it different times on the pod. We all fucking suffer from it. There's listeners of ours that write into us to tell us that we're helping through some mental health shit. And if you're genuinely going through it, great. But we're not but broadcasting me like he is. You know what I'm saying? You get, grifters, like... you get grifters who hang on to that fucking thread now and know that you can't really fucking quiz them on it. You can't, it doesn't, you can't scrutinize it or whatever. You just have to accept it if somebody comes out and says that. And uh-huh. I think his layoff was more to do with like he said, he gave away on himself in some of the interviews. He was fucking drinking and gambling the minute he hit the jackpot. He won the world title the night he beat Luke Campbell in his own head. He was bigger than ever on social media. It was his first big fight. He'd knocked him out. He got up off the deck and he went fucking gambling and drinking and then he came back with a mental health. I said, oh, guys, are feeling really bad. Well, so yeah. I. My mental health will be on the floor Aye. if I was in Vegas for fucking two months in a row as well. Yeah. It's like the, the new bad fucking, back, you know, isn't it? Yeah. Without, you know doubt, what I mean? without doubt, without yeah, doubt, mate, there is, without doubt, there is mental health issues there. But he has got to, he's, he, surely at some point, where is, where is he now, man? He's, he's 25. Mind. Surely at this point, someone's got to say to him, he's got a family there, you're saying, Steve, that he's like, they're kind of managing him, that type of stuff and that, Rob. Yep, Someone, the manager. Fucking someone's got to say to him, well, listen, here's, here's, here's the deal here. He's living the life. He's a fucking Lotario. This is the thing. He's a shagger. That's the fuck. <sighs> Shaggers and top level athletes, you have to fucking, you have to find that fucking fine balance. You get me? Like, you have to fucking keep yeah, it out of the line. Like, this fella's not the ones up left, right, and center. He's no real he's Leonard, fucking... though, is he? No. He's no Roberto. In a lot of ways. In a they can be the, you know, they can be the Lotharios, mate, and take on the women and that type of stuff and still handle business in the ring. He ain't that dude. Well, I went to see my dad today for his birthday. He was 86 down in the nursing home. He thinks he is. And he told me in his prime, 
in London that had six women at the one time. I said, fucking hell, that I was some going. And he goes, and they were giving me money too. I was like, fucking hell, he's a gigolo in his own head. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely outstanding confidence. Yeah, and you want, yeah, you want, mate. Well, you know, people, people, people in the new actually want to be like different, different fucking genders, man, for Christ's sake. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, uh, the thing, the, yeah, the guy, uh, you want to thing, be. The guy, thing for me is just, it's a, it's a, he thinks he's surrounded by so many yes men in his entourage and that weird little California TikTok space where they're all bro, man, you're awesome. I'm, wow. You got so much money. You can do whatever you want. That is, he thinks I've heard, I can, I can hear from him. Like even like in the height of his mental health crisis, he did an interview with that Bobby Altoff, you know, her, that fucking boring ass fucking white bread, fucking American one. Like who's nothing behind her, but all of a sudden has the biggest fucking podcast in the world doing kind of, Awkward social interactions. Garcia is there talking to her about getting her eyebrows done and that. Like, and he just has people around him telling shitty jokes that are not funny, and all the entourage are laughing and that. And it's just like I can tell he's concocted this shit in his head and he's running with this as a magnet. Like I said to you, the further the brand of Ryan Garcia, but not further Ryan Garcia, the athlete, the boxer, the fucking world potential world champion. And I don't think I I, I say it now. I think if he be, gets beat by any and everyone at world title. Unless they give him a vacant fucking... Oh, he like, tri- yeah, you know, gets Barroso like, or something, yeah. Make a fucking... Oh, God, Garcia gets Barroso, kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? For his fighting career, if that's the way he wants to go to build the brand of Ryan Garcia and just keep the fucking social media style lit, he should have just fought Raleigh. The Raleigh fight was on the table. Yeah. He'd have flown Raleigh's head bad. into Rose Zed. He would have looked great doing it. Ryan, the king is back. Call out everybody. Haney, Tank, fucking Shakur here. I'm here to take names. Everybody, his star would have got up. But for some reason, he's opted to fucking fight Devin Haney and talk about the Bohemian Grove. I don't know. It's a flawed market plan for me, but there's still only one outcome. It's Devin Haney. Devin the Dream Haney next Saturday night, no doubt. Could you imagine that, Rob? Garcia talking about Bohemian Grove, Raleigh trying to remember Jesus. It'd be an amazing post-fight interview. <laughs> I it's kind of want... fucking all you need is Jim O'Doherty in the background just walking the boys to the ring. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I just want for there to be a freaking Ryan Garcia podcast where he talks about Alex Jones things. Be like, they're turning the freaking boxers gay! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to that belly of the week. I see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, final Rob, what did you say? Haney points. Did hey, you... I, I think it's going to be Haney stoppage. I just think he'll okay. break him down. I think Garcia will quit. I think he'll quit. Okay. Uh, what do you say, Matthew? Same. Well, I think he'll... I don't know, man. It's so odd. And um, I'll give Haney points the safe bet, but I really have no idea what's going to happen. But I think it's going to involve Haney winning, whatever does happen. Yeah, I think I've seen Henny kind of like the half stoppage, mate. Um, again, it's it's just been it's it's just, it's weird how quick this fight skills came up, but the whole charade and that you just don't know if it has been how it's went, like you know, drink drugs or that type of smoking, whatever it is, you know, still getting his hole, whatever it, whatever it is, man. But the fight's here; he's got to step up and deliver now. But. Haney's just, he's, he's proven it, mate. He's proven himself now. you got to give him his, his respect. And Garcia just hasn't, just hasn't earned it for me. So it's got to be Haney for me. Good shout. There you go. All the panel are going for Haney. Any other cards, Matty, before we go on to Bell you the Week that I might be missing here? I we got don't everything know. Anyway? Maybe no. if there is, they don't matter. Yeah, exactly. They don't yeah. matter at all to us. Right, let's get on with it then. Uh, episode 568 Bell You the Week. Rob's here, Matty's here, Andy's here as well. In honour of Ryan Garcia, we're going to play one that we haven't Ooh. played in quite a while into the Bell You the Week here. It's the main man himself, old uh, Richard D. Crawler. Today, I am delighted to be joined by former lightweight world champion Anthony Crawler. How are you? Before we start, I would like to point out why I have made yet another Madeleine McCann film. It is to expose the mainstream media and show to the widest possible audience that their purpose is not to find out facts, investigate stories, then truthfully report them. The mainstream media are used on a daily basis across all publications by an elite few for a range of nefarious purposes. Mainstream media publications are no more than information prostitutes who serve those with enough money or power to help them with their disgusting agendas. <laughs> <laughs> Information <laughs> prostitutes, boys, that's what we're all about. That's what we're all about. <laughs> we're going to get us fucking bombed off YouTube, we're only joking. <laughs> 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 we're going to go down with the ship here, with the Richard D. Hall ship, fuck me. 
Oh dear. <laughs> climbing up, climbing up Mount Everest. <laughs> My fucking balls, climbing up Mount Everest. <laughs> um, Paul Raftery joined us. We'll never Patreon. forget. <laughs> After he, he joined us on Patreon, actually, we were talking about Dillian White this week uh, being Ooh. exonerated and all, and he wanted to uh, drag this one back up from Smiddo. The Dillian the White, the Dillian White, well, he's been exonerated now, Andy, by the Texas Commission, apparently, and he's coming back. We're not quite sure where, but Paul wanted me to drag Fucking this one up Texas. from Smiddo. Uh, uh, the rant on Dillian White, so I've done that for our new yes. subscriber. Here we go. And I'm happy to give a bit of a Dillian White career update for those that want it. Um, he had a drugs ban basically before any of us actually heard of him. Knocked out clean by AJ. Went the distance with Dave Allen. Life and death with Chisora. Rocked by Hellenius. Beat a fat slob, uh, uh, Lucas Brown. Life and death with Parker. Failed a drugs test. Life and death with Rivers after changing gloves without consent for that fight. No B sample. Then he fought a fat mess. Whack. And was a fat mess himself. Uh, iced by Povetkin. Beat a covid uh, drained and finished Povetkin, waited a thousand days to be KO'd by Fury in an utterly embarrassing effort on the biggest stage of all. And then he's got a split decision win over the dan danger man, boogeyman of the heavyweight division, Jermaine Franklin. Then he's failed another um, drugs test on what will be surely his, his final opportunity at, at a proper payday. So it's just embarrassing, really, as, as time goes on. <laughs> I love the I love, I love the big caps to end there. This is just a talk we're hearing here by the way. was armed with a lot of information that night, wasn't he? <laughs> a lot of statistics wasn't like him. Um, but I don't fucking catch it. It's not his last opportunity. Did you see uh, we should have covered it probably last week, uh, Joe Parker's fucking call out video to Oh, I got that wife. too, actually. Yeah, oh, amazing man, brilliant. Yeah, I've got that too. I'll play it right now for you, Robin. Gonna get pulled down, you know. No, I'll, 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 I'll be worth it, mate. Because I tell you what, she if likes the rock and Roman Reigns seen that as part of the bloodline, they'd be fucking owning that ass, be fucking chopping heads <laughs> off for the fucking steak, man, sending it for the four quarters of the globe. Amazing, that was brilliant. Joe Packer, Joe Packer's become one of my favorite fucking guys, by the way. What He's a actually got guy. his boys to actually help him out with that video, it's brilliant. When it cut to the guy, the big guy, in the <laughs> No Sad though, amazing. after the two biggest wins of his career, he's calling out frigging Dillian White. <laughs> yeah, well, the two guys he beat are fighting each other. What chance has he got? So I was joking a couple of weeks know, ago. I, I said, know, I, 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 I said, Joe Parker's looking for an opponent. He probably wouldn't have fucking fought Zilly Zang again if he'd have known fucking Dillian White was back. He must have been listening. <laughs> Rob, I just got to ask you have you ever sampled anything from the powerhouse that was Take That? No, take that, take that, take that. <laughs> I'll, I'll just own that. I, I can remember when they broke up when they, 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 the lassies locally in that man, they were fucking. Yeah, oh, same. Was crying right They were they absolutely up. inconsolable, man, when they broke and up. Like, so what? They're not your fucking parents. Get over the fucking cup yeah, on fucking yourself. They brilliant. were nothing without Robbie Williams. We all know. They were a lassie in the corner for me, man, when they broke up. Honestly, God, she, she was never seen for about three months. <laughs> oh, see, you, you thought it was a death in the family, man. You thought, honestly, it was tremendous. There we go. Right, I'll tell you what else is tremendous, Andy. Yes. There he is. <laughs> it's Rick Ross or Adrian Brown. I told oh. you. 
<laughs> I told you when, hey, last week he put the picture I'm running. Who was it that sent me it? I can't mind. Yeah, coming it, back, it, man. It was Declan Graffin possibly sent me it. Oh, lordy. But look at that baby, man. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that baby, literally. Isn't he supposed to be hell. fighting at welterweight in like a Welterweight? Well, he's 140 again, isn't he? Mate, mate, sorry, mate. He, he, he missed that. You should have said light heavyweight. <laughs> Told ya. Okay. I said, Andy's yeah. gonna end up coming back at light heavyweight, man. Trying Look to play the ball. I said that all along. Just fucking slap my gut and read the waves on my way. Hey, what a pity. I was actually, I saw on Insta some my algorithms are all boxing and big asses. Um, and fucking, unfortunately, it was on the boxing clips, but it was fucking uh, AB at lightweight. He was fucking, he was very good at lightweight. Oh, he wasn't good. I would say he was a bit of a weight bully in that, but mm. fuck me, he could have been a lot more than what he was. Like, made that ever, made that it took his soul out of his body. Oh, yeah. Took it and it was never coming back. Oh, Reverse the hump in the end 10, I'll best moments good, ever. The really fortunate thing when it comes to Broner is that, like, considering his size, he's probably done with boxing, but the fact that he has celebrity is going to help him. I mean, I can see the commercial already. He's like, you know, I'm Adrian Broner, and I used to fight people in the ring, but now. I'm fighting diabetes. Well, don't be don't be surprised if you know that fight with the quote where she's calling for a fight with a mate. Don't be surprised if that's the fight that happens. AB versus fucking Clarissa C is the quote, baby. Yeah, baby. It is, Rob. Talk you know shit, the quote. It's track. That, that Bruno Chino fight is actually the, the full fight is available on YouTube, right? So we can get the same fucking yeah. link sent it to everybody, right? <laughs> we'll do a live watch along. A few beers, oh, kebab, like or something like that. Should we should do it for Christmas special or something for exactly. bringing that back. Broner's birthday. Exactly. Because we've done <laughs> it for Pontius in, for Pontius for, in the past. Exactly. We forgot about it last year, mate. We forgot about the anniversary last year. How could we fucking do that? I'm telling you, Broner I know I've said Gino. it a million times. I get tired of talking about my dad in the pub, but like everything that came from me for boxing came from my dad. But like one of the nights, we've always liked different fighters. Always our whole, like since I was fucking eight, we liked different fighters. He liked Hanger, I like Leonard. This goes back that far, like, but on that night we were fucking united for Chino, man. And we were <laughs> celebrating as if fucking Ireland were after beating England oh. in the soccer. It was fucking okay. scenes in the middle of the it, night, jumping around the fucking great. super. It amazing. Was great, but I tell you what, what came after that was Fitzgerald against Fowler. Oh, I mean, Fitzy baby, Fitzy baby dropped them. Fuck it, was it the tenth round last oh, round? That was over us. And another night, a great night for unification on the pod was uh, Pavekin versus Dillian White. But the joke was on me because I had the bet loaded in me fucking Paddy Power and I didn't hit the oh, fucking right. link. I went to collect the winnings <laughs> after it was fucking sick. Oh man, I was sick. But that was a fucking amazing. Night. We were doing a watch along that night. I think was it COVID times. Taylor O'Hara Davis. Oh. Yes, I think we did do watch along actually. Covid times were fucking grim for the box in asylum, weren't they? We were going back in the days, we were making Mate, up fights. How we, how we get you that out? Uh, how we get we even, we even we were so bereft of talent, we even discussed so far. We even watched so far <laughs> fights. That's how bad it was. Sweet, how bad it was. The liver for you every week. When you're on your fucking universal source and charging, you wouldn't even fucking throw a super chat there. Bunch of tight <laughs> bastards. Hey, I, <laughs> I, 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 I understand where you guys are coming from, but come talk to me when you've been sitting on FanDuel betting quarters on Russian table tennis. That <laughs> you. You've been betting on them slap tournaments. We were, talk, we were slap. talking about COVID, not degenerate fucking gamblers, degenerate <laughs> Italian gamblers. Well, the tough thing about that was trying to like hey, remember yo. like who the good hey. ones were because like how many fucking Sergeys can there be? I mean, it was like match A, match B, it's Sergey against Sergey. <laughs> what was that tournament, Andy, when they were fighting on top of the shipping containers and the loser like fell off into remember the that's... and all? Oh, <laughs> I I that was fucking brummy, remember that? I... The cover for it was like a fucking 80s B movie flick. It was <laughs> ridiculous. Elite Jesus man. Christ. I feel like that was something that would normally happen on international waters, but you know, fuck it. That's what that's what happens when you start giving fucking fellas that have autism a lot of funding. You know what I mean? It's like they come to you with an idea and you don't want to fucking shoot it down. Like, yeah, no man, I can see this working. <laughs> oh dear, what else have we got? Let's have a look here. Uh Jesus. Cali. Cali Sowerland was jumping in to the uh, face off here. One of the nutters suggested that he looked like John Lydon. <laughs> <laughs> it's harsh, isn't it? That <laughs> he's doing his best, old Cali. Look at Cali. Look at Actually, if you just put the other guy's hair on his head, you're onto something. No, guys. It is pretty oh, impressive that Malcolm McLaren's bitch is still alive to this day. <laughs> 
Uh, Chris Williamson heard about Jerron Ennis against Connor Ben. Heard they're preparing to build Ennis versus Ben as Boots versus Super Joe. Amazing. <laughs> that was a good That's one. Going, that was high up. <laughs> <Brilliant. Nice. laughs> Fair play, absolutely fucking brilliant, that is. That sounds like something I'd say. Fair play to me for coming yeah. up with that. Brilliant. Well done, that was good. That was good. Like... One you come up with there. I'm glad I came up with that just yeah. now. Exactly. Well done. More like boots for sandals. <laughs> He's enjoying himself. Uh, Gareth A. Davis said, the hand, the hand of friendship offered to me from Turkey, Al Al Sheikh, uh, knockout chaos. A hand, a handshake of welcome, of warmth, full of passion for the sport, which I has been work, my working life, a sport and a community I cherish. Boxing has been and is being uplifted, transformed and moved into unprecedented times by this great hand, which carries friendship to fighters and to our unique sport. <laughs> this hand is creating legend. It is bringing us all together. It will inspire a new generation. But the hand on its own, like fucking Adam's family. <laughs> What's he? <laughs> standing for the great warriors, Rob, for history, for culture, for a shared appreciation. Then he says, we have so much to be grateful for, for this great hand in our sport. Thank you, Your Excellency, for what you are creating in boxing. It will never be forgotten. You're, I it's mad that he, he actually wrote that in an Arabic accent as well. You just didn't hear it on the <laughs> <laughs> He has offered me his hand. And, uh, anyway. I would be careful <laughs> shaking hands with Gareth A. Davis. i got to be honest with you. Yeah. I've no, got to be I, honest, yeah. I just have to say, I hope that he uh, moisturizes well because, I mean, with that much jerking off, he's going to chap his excellence. <laughs> <laughs> the poor his guy. excellency was like, Jesus Christ, you were so grip. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> yeah. And cup the balls. Cup the balls. <laughs> Oh dear, good old Gad. What else have we got here? Uh, Mauricio Suleiman says, I am very proud of a WBC judge who has just declined an appointment to officiate a fight due to the fact that he knows in a personal way one of the fighters. Truly exemplary, Andy. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Mauricio surprised by actor professionalism and ethics. That, yeah, that person just clearly fired. fired. I'm not sure, just... to be honest. I don't know. Mauricio was congratulating him. For, yeah, for doing we'll his job, what, we'll never know what <laughs> was, fight because we I won't mean, know that the fix is in on that one. Yeah, I mean, he's probably he's probably a licensed WBC judge because he knows we fucking say these bread's butter, you know. So he's Absolutely. fucking gonna take. They all know. Dum dum dum. Uh, Rick Laser tweeted out two years ago today. Sanctions. Are <laughs> yes, you <laughs> regards to Daniel. <laughs> well, a great bunch of lads. We wish him well. Sacations. <laughs> oh, no, that's what I. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. Well, Staycations, he's getting confused with those trips to the fucking UAE that he was not before <laughs> yeah. the boys are on the run. <laughs> he's been on a staycation <laughs> to Jordan for three years. Oh dear. Uh, here, Matt, this was a good one bad word said about him on a pod. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Woodson the third turned so... up <laughs> when he's. <laughs> Wearing his jammies. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. He looks like he's fucking going to buy fucking chocolate milk on the school run. Don't he's wearing a pair of leggings and a pair of Jordans. Yeah, well, why, why, can't, why can't men wear leggings, Steve? <laughs> well, not in the middle of a boxing match, I wouldn't have thought about it. I mean, he, he, I don't know. He's not taking his job seriously, I don't think. Maybe a dog bit his calves earlier in life and he's ashamed <laughs> of them. I mean, how do you know? They literally look like, they, honestly, did you see this clip, by the way? He, they literally look like they got this fell off the corner. They look like, what? Are, I haven't got any boxing gear. Just wear what you're having, man. Pull these shorts up over your fucking leotard. Just, pull them the crowd, just fucking just pulled it off schedule, you know what I'm saying? In the fucking hallway. <laughs> yeah, fuck Pele, boy, mate. The city has six children. And I bet they're fucking delighted. <laughs> 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 they still like have like what colors their trunks were in the corner or did they just say shorts pants uh, your mom yeah. was giving it a, a bit of ben, ben Whitaker vibes by the way he was after humiliating this fucking fella in a pair of leggings and a Jordans and was up on the ring apron celebrating his fucking win <laughs> fuck's sake <laughs> Ali boom oh dear uh, Tok has sent me this before the pod started late value of the week shout to Michael Hunter who's in the process of losing to a random Russian who's very limited on an IBA pro card in Tashkent. Hunter absolutely fucked after three rounds and is losing a clinch fest. Was hurt to the body, bad in the ninth. Then he went on to say, Michael Buffer is the MC and announced him as the world's most avoided heavyweight. He's gone and stunk it out, got cut badly over both eyes, got hurt to the body multiple times and lost a unanimous decision. Absolutely awful, Andy. Looked like he hadn't trained at all and was fucked after three rounds. Yeah, I've never seen it, mate. Um... No, it's not a box trick. Yeah, it's not on box rec, but as I say to you guys, it's like this before this, this before it went live. These some of these IBA shows um, appear on box rec as like professional wins, and sometimes they don't. So I don't know what the fuck's going on there. But anyway, that Hassan boy Dusmatov, mm. who ring bell, uh, ring bells to some people, and that he's a flyweight. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars he got for his fight last night, I believe, plus a fucking Mercedes G wagon. 
Whatever G wagon cost, what is that? Three hundred thousand? I don't Ooh, know. What's the G wagon cost? Serious dineros. Serious man, right? Up so, anyway, two hundred so, up. I don't know if that's for remember the gangsters in Uzbekistan or whatever. That, anyways, that's some fucking serious deal for a flyweight money, right? So where the fuck's everybody else lining up for these uh, for these type of fucking paydays for? It's all on staycation. Why, yeah, but. Yeah, you know, I think he fought. Uh, was it Sammy Carmona? I don't know if any of you boys know him. I think he's, he's yeah, a Sammy Spanish, Carmona. Yeah, remember yeah, him? Spanish amateur. He done pretty well for himself, actually. To be fair, in terms of in terms of titles, and that but or in terms of likes of qualification, podiums, that medals. But it's it's weird. I mean, I the the, the IBA are, are basically the body. I believe are in charge of the Olympic or the, the boxing for Olympics, and there's there's. Even then, there's still serious questions of whether it's going to go ahead. You know, boxing at Paris this year. Mm. Um, yeah, it's weird. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars, US dollars, by the way, uh -huh. for a, for fucking this matter. Of, as we were saying, Matty, Uzbekistan, three hundred fifty thousand dollars US in Uzbekistan is fucking like god money, by the way. What? Yeah, dude, it's it's you guys. Wh wh where's the incentive for him to then turn proper pro? And fight like say Gonzalez or Estrada yeah, exactly. or Sonny Edwards. Not, that. Is there? No. Yeah, Driving around in his G wagon, throwing mate, money at people. I would fight fucking someone for fucking three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'd US. love to be I'd... over in Uzbekistan with three hundred and fifty k in my pocket in a G wagon. I tell you that was. <laughs> <laughs> You'd fight on top of a shipping container for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> fucking Jesus, my boy, what's going on? Where's the money coming for? Of course, it's rushing back that IBA stuff, like. Mm -hmm. Where's the money coming from? Where's so it where going? What did Michael Hunter earn, by the way? Just out of so curiosity. I, I'm not sure. Sexual slavery. <laughs> well, <laughs> mate, whatever it is, it's sex, sexual, intersexual, <laughs> heterosexual. I don't give a fuck, mate, but they're earning serious fucking corn. Whether That's it's getting bent air. That's bread for a flyweight. I can't even imagine a, a top flyweight in Japan or anything even getting that kind of fucking bread. That'd be, well, maybe some of them are getting 500 grand or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, what am I talking about? As if I fucking know what the fuck is going on behind yeah, the scenes. Oh, oh damn, Rick Liza. But me. Important matchmaker, I'll tell you. To some people, that might be chump change to like the one percenters, but the guys like us, the three hundred fifty thousand dollars oh, yeah, US, yeah. man, that's fucking serious change. I'm just thinking about how quick I could spend it. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah. time. Jesus. Uh, uh, all these booked in there, but I mean, I, I would definitely be going to be three times this year at least, you know, without doubt. You could get a ticket to this, Andy. Getting well, lively fuck, in Manchester. But I would Looks take like it anyway. But, but, oh, sorry. See, see if you go back to the other picture. Sorry, go back to the other one. Huh? Go back, go back to the other picture you just put away there. That one? That one, that's the one. So if I had, oh. if I had $350,000, I'd be yes. hiring a fucking um, hitman Rastity. to take her out. No, I'd be hiring a hitman to take her out. Oh. There we go. Take her out for the night? No, take her out. The hitman. You're out tax now, aren't you? Uh, don't say those gross. things. <laughs> Man, we love the quote here with Alicia Bongard. Isn't Bongard not like a featherweight or something? Bongard was 140. She's a nice 104, 147. I think she's Just nice a nice 140. Yeah, it's nice, nice 140. Cutting 147 nice and easy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, are we going to cover the quote? This the quote surely you nominated for Rebellion of the Week. Is she for her you dropping her disc track? Tracks, mate, she, yeah. you I did. I remember that. Is that this week some... or last week? I got no, no, it this the week. Beach. Yeah, was no, it? it's some hot shit actually. Last week was uh, pop my shit, Steve. Pop we need shit. to catch up on fucking this is a uh, yeah, quote a remix of Glorilla, who seems like a lovely girl, has a song with Megan the Stallion. Uh, the video is very interesting. Um, <laughs> but Gl Glorilla, yeah, Glorilla's yeah, Glow. A remix by the Gwoth as Yeah Gwoth. A diss track aimed at Alicia Baumgartner where she's out in her front garden uh, decorated in all her belts. And she had prefaced this this with a conversation with Eddie Hearn where she made Eddie blush and she said, Eddie, that's like me being mad at you because you was born with a good looking face. And Eddie, we got all shy and uh, bashful uh, in front of in the presence of the Gwoth. And she said, at the end of the day, Eddie, she's a drug cheat. And I was going to get down to 154, but I ain't dropping 30 for a bitch to pop dirty. Yo, talk your shit to quotes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm liking that. So she incorporated that into the track as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, and she said, I don't even feel like the quote is that better looking of a woman than me. She said to Eddie. Uh, well, I would disagree with that. And then Alicia Baumgartner countered uh, by putting up a picture of her and Glorilla, who really did the song uh, together, in, in which she was looking spectacular. So it's 10 10 round there. Uh, but I'm biased. <laughs> we love the growth on here, anyway. Yeah, the growth, the good. 
Well done to the quote. Um, who else have we got then? Adam's Boxing Show has made a discovery that he's letting the world know about. Eddie Hearn is gradually becoming the best promoter in boxing. This dude is making move after move. He's becoming a powerhouse out of nowhere. <laughs> Salute to him, 100%. There you are. New uh, discovery. New, boxing, is new, yeah. boxing. New, 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 new promotional discovery in the boxing world here. Eddie Hearn, according to Adam's Boxing Show. We might listen to that during the week. We'll see. He's going to be was... really disappointed when he finds out that Budweiser no longer sponsors boxing. I'm sure he is. I'm yeah. sure he is. Uh, Nao Inoue was responding to Sean Porter's assertion that he needs to come over to America to become a star. An art man jumped in. Who doesn't love a bit of art man? He said, I'll never respect Inoue's top pound for pound if he doesn't fight a skilled American in America. I don't trust the testing, the gloves, the hand wraps in that country. If he really liked that, he would come and talk that anti-American shit here. Artmanapowell.com. Yeah. Well, wanker, baby. <laughs> I told you this. I, you know, that tweet that he's actually quoting there actually was basically in UA stating that um, there's no better options for him in America than now. So he's you know, um, he's, um, you know, he's a racist. Fan. Hard man is yeah. he's yeah. a racist man. Uh, he was fucking talking that shit for for full time before he went to Japan and got his ass handed to him. <laughs> then it became about the gloves and the wraps and the fucking whatnots. Fucking shithead him. Ran off Twitter as well without paying anybody their fucking dues after the Earl Spence talk for fucking five years. Like, an absolute shithead he is. Like, absolute moron. Yeah. And I don't know what the heck Inouye said back to him, but I know I've seen some of those uh, as tattoos on people younger than me. Yep. He'll... He'll come straight at you, Matty. Uh, talking the Japanese boxing scene as well, Masanori Rikishi, you might not have heard of him, you might well have done, was doing the pads this week, and his uh, trainer had some interesting headgear to show. And then he lets him slap him in the face. What kind of shit <laughs> are these guys into? Oh, no. but, uh, chin checking, you know. Fucking Pornhub in the house. <laughs> Fucking eat this glove, bitch. <laughs> Smile. Yep. Love a bit of a quiche. What else have we got on the agenda here? I like Rikishi, the wrestler. He was fun. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of, actually. Uh, Joe Kennedy nominating uh, King Roy. I got some serious Raging Bull intro vibes here, says Sean Zittel. Hashtag Haney Garcia. Hashtag boxing. He was uh, doing some moves with King Roy, preparing for the big one next week. And then just a fun one at the end, Matty. I know I put this in the nutters during the week, as I was telling you. I, was, uh... I remember me dad written out Rage Bull when I was about 10, trying to fast forward the blowjob scene on the VCR. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dad, I like this rock, what are you, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> oh, She's dear. 50. She's a neighborhood girl. Who's she going with? She's fucking 50. Where are you going to take her? The Cobra Cabana? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Catholics yeah. deserve oral too, Dad. <laughs> Fast forward through. King Roy letting the hands go there. And as I said during the week, Matty, uh, during my King Roy, Devin Haney preview show uh, uh, article, writing about Roy's antics, I did a word count. And that was what the words came to. Is this is this some kind of premonition, some kind of prescient prediction? Interesting. Matty? Interesting numerology there, Steve. There you go. Could be sending us a message. They're, fucking, they're rubbing it in our faces at this stage, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> upside nine, upside down nine, nine, nine. There as well. I don't think I didn't spot that one. <laughs> oh yes, well spotted. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. Right, final one. Bit of bond see as well. Someone sent me this during the week. Hi, Josh. Good to see you, sir. Good Absolute to see you. Pleasure, good boys. You. I'm a sweaty hand, mate. You, you nervous um, around John Fury? Is that what's happening? <laughs> don't say it. No, no, no. We're keeping. We're trying to make out. We're trying to make it as Barry Mc or someone else. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, those were the ones I've got, Andy. Anything from you this week, please? I ain't got any, mate, to be fair. I think the NUA one was to be fair. That it was just, uh, to be, I, I was expect, I've been expecting that to be fair because there's been a bit of shit about him. You know, no fighting as often in America. He's this big fighter, this big star. And that. I just like the fact that he kind of called it out in the end. And that. It, did, it did promote a bit of fucking bounce, to be fair, as well. But um, yeah, it's been kind of quiet, to be fair, this week. Yeah, Rob, what you got? I'm riding with I'm riding with Clarissa this week. Next week I'll I'll go be back. Oh yeah, he's back and forward, Matty. What you got? Hmm. 
Any nominations? I, I I got nothing for nominations this week. I, I was probably gonna, Dominic. I, I think at the end of the day, I think you have to fucking basically give one to Merhi for for his uh, near his no, the lows in CompuBox it's, numbers. It it's because you, you're missing the point. It's because he had such a high box and IQ. That's why that fucking <laughs> remember was, last week they who, said he had. High. That's right. Yeah. Sh- Steve, what was he name again? Harry Akin one day for fucking Lance Lewis. That was a oh, level yeah. of shit, man. That he fucking you know, right. talked about. He got disqualified, didn't he? Yeah, against. Aye, that was that was a bit the, the only thing that may, Mary could have done there the last time. I can wonder. I can wonder. Wrote the fucking Derek Chisora blueprint, didn't he? He was always fighting in public and all thrown over tables, wasn't he? It's almost <laughs> a matchroom tactic. Akin one day, yeah, for me, forgot about him. Got banged up by Oliver McCall, didn't he, back in the day? Oh, no, wasn't hype that was causing all the fucking fracas in public. Sorry, it wasn't that good one day. It was hard behind. Hard behind. Sorry. Behind. There you go. Uh, okay, so let's go through them quickly and then get out of here. We did have a question from Damer, but I forgot to forgot to get to that. We'll get to that next week. We got AB rolling up, looking well. The growth rolling, <laughs> rolling all over the place. <laughs> rolling <laughs> uh, down the street. Cali from the Sex Pistols. We got Boots versus Superdrug. We got the hand being extended. Got Mauricio Suleiman praising people for doing their jobs. Got Rick Glazer praising people for doing Say-cations, their jobs. Sacations, baby. Yep, sacations. We've got um, Anthony Woodson the third turning up on the school run. We've got Michael Hunter getting banged out. We have Match Room getting lively. We've got this new promotional discovery from Adam's Boxing Show. Uh, in UA going back and forward with Art Man. We've got Ryan uh, Raging Bull, Raging Bullshit, and 666 confirmed. And then the videos this week, we had the Joseph Parker call out, which we'll probably regret playing that, but we'll sort it out later. We've got uh, Dillian White as well, uh, Pornhub Masanori Rikishi, and Bun C, but she toes in as well. So quite an eclectic mix this week, Andy. Who are you going for? Um, I was going to go for the goat, mate, until I seen the Bun C shithousing, so I'm going to go for Bun C, mate. Bun C, okay. That's one for Bun C. Matty, who well, I wonder for? really what I wonder, I really want to know what Frampton thought, actually. So <laughs> he knows you know what who, might, You know who it? you are, guys, so let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matty? Yeah, I don't think Bun has had it in a while. Let's let's give it to the old man. Oh, two for Bun Rob, what about you? What are you going for? Yeah, we go for the hat trick for Bun Why not? The hat trick. Yeah, we, we, we were quite entertained, Steve. Absolutely. <laughs> quite entertained. Jay can't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let's play, let's play that. Let's see if we can find it for Buncey. Just to celebrate Buncey's win, here we are. Jay can't, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Congratulations, Steve Bunce. You're the valuable <laughs> winner for episode 568. And that's where we shall leave it. Shout out to who left us the super chat? Ryan. Ryan Deal. Yeah, it was Ryan Deal. He jumps in, leaves his money, and jumps out. Can't complain about that, Rob. Comes back, he's the only one that comes back and comments on the fucking thing the next day as well. Come on, Ryan. Hey. We're doing this for you, basically, dude. You're funding the fucking yeah. whole operation. Hey, I just want to say for all those people who uh, doubt free markets and such, uh, New Zealand is the freest nation on earth. So, uh, and Ryan keeps kicking us money. They've got to be connected. They're fucking cash flush in New Zealand. Cash flush in New Zealand, says Matty. We're happy to go along with that. And that is where we shall leave it. Thanks to everybody for coming on. We'll talk Henry Garcia next weekend. Hopefully the fight took place. Thanks to Rob. Thanks to Matty. Thanks to Andy. I've been Steve. Matty will Rest be in, in the Rest in peace, OJ. Next week. Rest in <laughs> peace, OJ. Here, Matty. I've got an the sun did it. The sun did it. All right. Uh, Chukri wants to come on, but there's, there's no chance in hell. We're going. Um, uh, we, ah! well, I was going to play this last week. Well, instead of the outro, Matty, I'll play this because I messed up the, the Foch Taylor for you. So just for you, Matty, at the end of episode 568, as everybody leaves and leaves their likes and subscribes, we'll catch you all again same time, same place next week. Bye.